Go ahead and talk on your mic. Check, check, check. This is Jared's dad. Yeah, the bomber is, you know, people have to kind of refine that. Now they're going to find it. Okay. Oh, they'll get a notification. Is everything's working now? We don't know. Waiting for people to come on. There you go. Now it sounds. What's that say? So, clear. There you go. Nice. Okay. That means these are picking up now. So everybody's on. Sounds good to me. There you go. Can you go okay. Go good. Cha ching, cha ching. And just tell them that there's a new. Check, check, I don't check. know. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, here it is. All right, guys. Sorry. Bear with us. Yeah. Uh, yes. Jared is still missing a finger. We ain't going to. We're not hey going to be able to get that. We'll get it. In new <laughs> live is up. For sure. Should get a notification. Game trails from Manitoba. Uh, as you guys probably already know, if you listen to us, it's High Life and Coors Banquet are the beers <laughs> of choice for Kansas City. I haven't had a High Life yet, actually. I've been all banquet. All could banquet. be could be the problem. Pure banquet. <laughs> yeah. could be the problem. I'm yeah. setting up with a mustache. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We're going to give this a few minutes. We're getting back up. We had about 100 people on before. so Cool. Yeah, let's see. Thanks for tuning in. Stream ended. Yeah, so hopefully y'all yeah. can figure it out that like, that's what the heck over. Going on? And we just have two people on this one. <laughs> no, there's 30 people. Oh, okay. I'm going to text Nick and see if he can update that for us. Mm -hmm. People are jumping over now. Sorry, guys. We're going to give it a few minutes as we get this all uh, ramped back up. Yeah, I don't know how to... I'm sure there is a way to change your inputs, I would think, on that, but... Comrade, what did uh, was that eight point or eighteen point in uh, Michigan? Do I remember that correctly? Philip, of course, champagne of beers. You're right, Rieger. Yeah, Nick Nick will say that we messed it up. Yep. These are hard. A lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is live. So yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. No delay. We'll do a live. Yeah, no do delay. Live. Delay. At least our internet's better and our video is way better than the last time. So we'll get it. We'll People will figure it out. We're gonna give it we're gonna give it till five minutes and then we'll we're gonna rip. Yeah. We're rip just it talking. and rip it. If you guys yeah. have to hear anything during this whole thing, do it or grab beers or whatever. If we normally can walk up and cut totally it. Fine. We don't. What's yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. We'll take we care. used to. We usually cut it out if we have to. Jared and I usually have to pee fifteen times. Oh. Uh, All right. But we can't do that on the live, so we would just get up and go outside. Yeah. 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 Outside. That's a big difference. We'll keep your discussion going. <clears throat> Jumping on now. Yeah. There you go. This comment section was working pretty good on here before. Olivia, I'm trying to. So you said, do we take credit for Steve leaving the Steve Shirk leaving the crossbow at home and taking the compound back out? <laughs> was he using a crossbow? If he was, we're going to give him shit. Wow. <laughs> was he really? Yeah. I can't believe he was using a crossbow. Conrad, that scored 204. PA, yeah, guys. dude, that's a giant. Guy killed a 18.204 with our advice. <laughs> wow. What you're the hell are you're, we you're doing? Oh my God. <laughs> you don't take your own advice, huh? I need to give yeah. myself some advice. Wow. wow. <laughs> I'd like to see a 200. Yeah, Olivia, we're, I'll make sure I text Steve probably tonight if, if that's the case. That's We don't want, we don't see that. He's going in the mountains for a challenge. Crossbow is not that. Yeah. Okay. We're up and rolling. Good to uh, go. I'm counting it down in 30 seconds, and then we're going to let her rip. No pressure. No pressure. Okay. No pressure, yeah. guys. Seems like there's just some pressure. And maybe just a disclaimer to everybody that's on right now. We're going to just initially here, we're just going to get on and do a podcast with the dads. We're going to talk. And you guys are free to comment and stuff kind of throughout it. And maybe we'll glance at them. But we're going to set some time apart at the end to read through those comments. We'll just scroll back up to the whatever, the top mm -hmm. and try to whatever. 
answer questions and, and dig through those. So that'd be the that'll be the tail end of the podcast. Initially, we're just gonna we're gonna talk with the dads here. All right, and we're back. <laughs> hey, <-o>. hey. <laughs> live from Kansas Deer Camp, uh, Taco Tuesday again. Again, as is tradition. Yeah. What number? Oh, well, this Delicious. is only the second live, right? Second, second live. live. Yeah. Number two. Yeah. 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 Nick. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Nick, can you keep, is it number two? Yeah, it's number two. Maybe we'll get Nick in a deer stand. Someday. No, probably not. I know he's not interested. Probably not. <laughs> no, that was the only reason he took the job is because we weren't going to make him film deer hunts. Yeah, pretty sweet deal. It's bad at the podcast. Sounds like a good deal to me. Yeah. I think Nick's at home watching. Nick, you can comment there if you're on there, yeah. or he can he can remain unnamed. Nick, bark <laughs> twice if you're in Milwaukee. <clears throat> There well, we, we are in uh, we are in Kansas Deer Camp again. Just for disclaimers, this is not our deer camp. It is an Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's been ours. We, this is yeah. our how many years we've been staying here? Two. Well, this is the second year here. Two years, but we've been hunting here longer than yeah. that. This is on one of the leases. Yeah, yeah. So I started hunting Kansas in 2013. It was the first year that I came out, and I've only not drawn once. That was still two only years once ago. Two years it was ago, 2021. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't draw. I've not drawn twice since I've been coming. I've been coming up not yeah. as long as you have. Yeah, I think I blame not drawing on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you can blame it on whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, it is what yeah. it is. Yeah. 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 So, but no, we've we've hunted here. I've hunted here since 2013, but we've hunted our kind of collective area since 2014 was the first time that we um, kind of hunted this section of of where we're at in Kansas. And um, yeah, I mean, we talked, well, we talked about it the other day. What, what did I have? Five? Did I go five bucks since 2013? One, two, three, four, four, five. Killed in 2013, 14, 18. Quite well. The one at Mark's is staying. 18, 20, and 22. I killed yeah. five. Yeah. Mm. Five I and got, I only got one. <laughs> I think I've only killed one in Kansas yeah. of, of all the year. I've shot. Add a few more. Than yeah, that. well, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. As have you, Jerry. I know. <laughs> Come on, Jerry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll bet. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. it's happened. Yeah, I've thrown uh, some arrows and go over to meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, I, I'm as guilty of it as anybody. So, yeah. we want to introduce our dads, I guess. For, yeah, uh, let's. Yeah, everybody's. This is like by like high request. Yeah, it's like when are the dads going to be? They're on like, how podcast? did you guys end up like this? Is yeah. we're like, well, I'll show you. Yeah, super. <laughs> high, yeah, they're like, they're like, really, like, were you adopted? Yeah, let's have the yeah. truth come out at this point. Yeah. Um, they're just looking to see who taught you all this stuff. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> we're, people are killing two hundred inch deer based on our advice, but we're not doing that at all. Uh, um, uh, all right, I'll go first. Uh, so to my right here is uh, my dad, Jerry. Um, I guess you born and raised in Western Pennsylvania, right? Yep, born and raised, yep. and then lived there your whole life. Yep. Um, and you know, we, I started hunting with you. I think the first time that I went out, and we'll probably get into talking about it more. But I started hunting with you. I think when I was nine it was the first time. That um, was yeah, nine or ten. That's when I got that eight point. Yep, in Mahaffey. That was the first. Yeah, I mean, we go out and we weren't even out what an hour. <laughs> and he's sitting there drinking hot chocolate and eating candy bar. And I'm thinking, I ain't never going to see anything. So I poured myself some coffee. And next thing you know, this eight point come up through. I shot it. It went down. We got it. We were back to camp. Like, oh, this is great. <laughs> your, your wife says, uh, how about the wives? <laughs> <laughs> how, about the, uh, uh, how about the moms, rather? Uh, <laughs> Listen, mama. Yeah. yeah. It's deer camp. Uh, oh. It's deer camp. Well, that's why we do so well, because they take. They're that's behind, it. They're right? behind the scenes taking there care of go. us. And Jerry, you're a good cook, too. So. <laughs> Yeah, wow. that runs in the Flynn family. So Jeremy yeah. cooks for, for me and Jerry it's, it's and Jeremy kinda, cook for it's dad. Been and nice. I haven't had to cook as much with him here. There you yeah. go. Yeah. No, no problem. I, yeah, I enjoy it. Even if I couldn't go out and hunt, uh, I'd still go to camp. Camp chef it. I could cook. Yeah. Take Get up to see now. everything. Uh -huh. And so still awesome. Your first time out here was twenty seventeen. Yeah. That was the year that I hit wide boy in the shoulder. Was that your first year? Yeah. Yep. yep. So yep, 2017, and then yeah. you you were here 18, uh, 19, 20, and 22, and now 23. Right, right, yep. So, and you yeah. killed here in 18. In 18. Yeah. Yep, we both killed out of the same stand down here. Right down, yeah, on this farm. Mm -hmm. yep. So, yeah, it's kind of crazy. I mean, we, you know, uh, it's uh, for you, I think that was, that was your first out-of-state hunt, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
definitely was. Yeah, I mean, well, I remember first the first few years here in Kansas. I mean, just seeing some of these deer mm -hmm. didn't get a shot at them. It, it really didn't matter because it was just awesome to see such size of yeah. deer, you know. But uh, and you never knew what was going to come walking out. And yeah, I think that's what made it so much fun. But of course, you know, I'm sure we'll get into that later. But things yeah. have kind of gone downhill for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a struggle. Well, we've had some yeah. tough weather weeks too. I mean, even yeah, this yeah. year, like we're. I mean, the longer we're here, we're talking to guys, and you know, like, there's some saw giant down the fence row and this and that. And it's like, yeah. yep. it's not like they're not here. We're just it's a it's a tough weather week right. for sure. They're right. they're locked down we really had hard. That, what, and, two years ago. Was that two years? Uh, it was the year Three Pat years. was here. I killed ago. I killed that like almost one sixty on public down yeah, on the flat. First day. It was the best one. And then yeah. and then it went to shit right after. And then that. it was yeah in the seventies all week and just yeah. crap. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kind of like this week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> kind of like this. Week. And similar. And I mean, the, the one thing I'll say about this week is like we've we've seen a lot of buck sign. Like they're sign. everywhere yeah. we've gone and scouted and kind of hunted. There, there's a lot of buck sign. It's just. The only deer to like cruising are one and two year olds. Fresh stuff too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that stand that I hunted tonight when I was walking in, I was like five or six scrapes that were tore up. I mean, it must have been last night because I was in there the day before and they weren't mm -hmm. there. Yep. Yeah. So they're there. I just think it's it's a lot of nocturnal yeah. movement and it is pu public land for the most part. So it's it's pressure meshed with lockdown, meshed with yeah. the heat, and yeah. it's just it's been tough. Well, what I find interesting, we were talking about when we were coming in, is I had five bucks around me tonight. They were either spikes or one horn or two point or whatever and it's like well where's all the six seven and eights like in between the booner and mm -hmm. the spike where are they at yeah <laughs> you know because they were these guys the spikes were chasing those but yeah you know, it was just for fun i mean none of them were really it anything going on well i think it will we'll, and we'll talk about it i think it's this you know where there's a hot doe there's a dominant buck with her and there's three to four satellite bucks yeah. Yeah. It's almost like an elk harem type of thing that's set well, up. Well, Jared had it right though. There's four of us. We could surround. <laughs> <laughs> he was in that there. That's my strategy. <laughs> swarm. <laughs> swarm. Yeah. And swarm. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. And go. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, all right. Yeah. Introduce your dad. And so to my left here is my dad, uh, Dwayne. And you've been coming out here for. It's my second year. Second year. So last year was your first year, right? Last year was a, yeah. a bad year. I don't know. No, it don't was know. a great year. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of shots, <laughs> lots of opportunities. Shots fired. I mean, yeah. no. Because well, I, I tried to prep you, I think, last year for, and I think Jeremy probably did the same thing to me is like, hey, this is a little different from yeah. Yeah. even Ohio, which a lot of people are like, oh, Ohio's, you know, big box state, you know, and it's like, no, Kansas, uh, Kansas yeah. is a little different. Um, so try, try to prep you. And you, I mean, you did great. I mean, you did the same thing that I did did right the first couple of years here and uh, had some opportunities and, and missed or hit two last year right I, I hit two and i tell you i just felt horrible when that happened you know yeah. it, you always do and i've never had a, a buck i think that drowned in the river but i'm gonna think that's what happened to that buck yeah you know yeah. i mean we pace that river up and down so many times finding what be basically beds at the outer right limits of where he right. kind of ran and the only place for him to go was into the river i wouldn't ever picture that stream to be that fast, uh, but, fast running and that deep but i mean jared either. saw two deer swimming down so, the river yeah this week yeah, yeah. so yeah. i mean they absolutely are doing it well we, we look at it as like a barrier we're like oh, i don't know if they'd cross that and it's like literally yeah. two days ago i saw a spike and a doe just just swimming like the channel of the river i watched him swimming for like 200 yards like it's like nothing that's why jump yeah. right yeah. in there yeah crazy <laughs> So, I mean, you know, thinking of how much blood that first year lost going in, I mean, it, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I'm thinking it was hot, had a fever, and wanted to get in the water, and mm -hmm. the water took it away. Because we were talking about that on the way down. That day, like, when we were searching that afternoon, it was hot. It, oh, yeah. Like, it was in the 60s, like, high yeah. 60s, probably. Hmm. Um, the rest of the week was pretty good, but that day, it was warm in the afternoon. I'd take that. That way. was a giant, right? You, you thought that was a that was, was a giant. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know what. We we weren't we don't really run cameras that hard out here, but <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. Well, we're saying it uh no, it was uh boy. north of one seventy. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, well, because we saw we one. should have been dragging that damn river. <laughs> <laughs> we saw one later in the week. So when I finally decided, I was like, you're seeing too much to like this. Can't oh, be. Yeah, so I yeah. went and hunted the tram. Yeah. And then I kicked up a for sure booner on the way down there. Yeah. And that was after you'd already hit two. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot of good deer down there that year. For whatever reason, you know, down here it just seems to be hit or miss. Uh, we have like good years and yeah, it seems like more good years than bad. You had one really off year, or we just didn't get it. It seems like um, it was due or something. But. It seems like this this place that we hunt where we're staying is very much feast or famine. Like mm -hmm. last year, it was unbelievable how many deer were down there. Um, 2019, when you were really into them over there, I mean, it was a ghost town here. This year, it's kind of the same. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, if you talk to some of the people, including the farmer that we're, that oh, we're yeah. renting from, I mean, they're here, Yeah. you know, I mean, him and his wife, the other is the morning before we came said, yeah, I saw a big one this way. And I saw the big one over here. Right. And it sounds like there's two and giants in this area confirmed by another pretty right. reliable source today. Yeah. I talked mm -hmm. to a guy today and he said not at this crossroad, 120 or whatever it was three. He, that's three guys. That he said every me. day. He says usually about every other day he sees them, but he travels that same route every day around the same time. I love, like nine said, to ten two, in the morning. Yeah, yeah, there's two big ones. He said uh, they're yeah. they're big. And he doesn't hunt. He's just a local yeah, guy who's been around it. But he knows right. that everybody's been just crushing three year olds, you know. And so that's he's like, yeah, it's just not what it used to be. All right. I mean, when we when we first um, leased this, we had, I guess it was. Um, what was it? 140. So it's probably about, we had 220 acres that we leased over here. That was in 2014. Uh, previously, the, the area had kind of been shut down from hunting because guys had shot cows during rifle season. Idiots. Off that yeah. property. Oh, yeah. Neighboring properties. Oh, yeah. But everybody kind of got on the same page and said, hey, no, 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 we're done. Do we're it. not doing this. Um, you know, and it, whether it was accidental or not, it's just dumb. And so when we met the guys, uh, the first thing was like, well, we're just bow hunting. So we don't, we're not, we're not here for rifle. We're just going to bow hunt. We had a couple people vouch for us with locals that help. And, um, that first year on just the 140 acre piece, I had a 150, a 175 and a 182, like consistently on 140 acres. And I killed the 175. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was, it was the 182 super freak. Oh, the one that got hit by the semi truck. Oh yeah. I guess yeah. we found him to confirm that. Huh? Yeah, we have mm -hmm. them. It's Is that all he was 182. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yep. And then, um, the other one was wide boy, which eventually got bigger. And so, you know, it was that to me was Kansas. It was like, Holy cow. Like mm -hmm. the giants are out here. And not mm -hmm. to mention there were probably three or four other just good mature deer out there. And then, like, slowly but surely, the following two or three years, tanked. Like, we chased a deer we called Super 7 for a long time. And he was awesome. He was a giant seven point. But, I mean, you know, you were talking about Boone and Crockett caliber deer. And now you're talking about chasing a, just a giant 150 because he's the biggest deer around. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't until uh, your first year that... Yeah. wide boy blew up to 180s yeah. and I stuck him in the shoulder. Um, but that was the biggest, that's been the biggest deer that we've had on camera. We've had a couple deer probably flirting with Boone and Crockett um, since then. We had a really big like 10 point that was over there that kind of disappeared. Well, and in fairness, like, you know, we're not, we're not uh, patrolling these farms with cameras as hard as no. we do, you know, at home and stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's possible that stuff is coming through at different times of the season. And most of the deer that we see don't show up until like end of October, October, early November. Like we don't see many late early season deer here. Right. Um, and it's intermixed with a lot of public. So, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't, I hunted at least, I hunted at least three, well, three times, I guess. I hunted the tram the first morning. Yep. I hunted that bottom field the other night and then I hunted this, stand that i hung the other morning but other than that i've been all public and it's all you'd expect to see you know some of the same deer i mean it's it's big public though so it's you know it's mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of acres i'm sure but yeah along yeah. with you know dozens of other guys oh, too yeah. so oh yeah <laughs> i mean we've, we've We're killed not by ourselves no. i know people have yeah. talked about it well i mean that's the other thing we can talk about it later but the the pressure around this area has really picked up mm -hmm. um you know, the public land side of things. At one point in time, I would have told you that the public land we hunted was as good as our leases. Oh, didn't, yeah, it didn't matter yeah. where we sat. No. Like, in fact, you were, we were sitting leases the year that you were just like 
swarmed with big bucks on public on public, public. Yeah. yeah you know we weren't seeing anything on private <laughs> right well and i you know that was one of the first years we decided to get creative to like <laughs> i was looked at i was like man the only way to get down there is from the river so we yeah, found found right. the <laughs> kayak and got across it and all and sure enough i was just yeah. in them i was just seeing big bucks like right you know every day and it was uh it's awesome that was the year that i missed why well, you know i stuck pretty boy up right like, or i basically skipped one off of his ribs at at one in the afternoon but um yeah i mean i would i would agree it's just generally speaking it's like the, the caliber of deer i mean at the same time though we had a guy today at the gas station he's on private you know just north of here it's like 300 300 acre tracks so like you guys want to see a giant <laughs> You know, yeah. pulls out 180 inch, 170 point, inch, you know? yeah, 170 inch. Had a 14 and a half inch G. Shout trail. out to Tim Nelson. Yeah, Timmy Nelson. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was a giant. You know, and and he had said he's been grinding it out for what 10 or 12 days. He said, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, and we'll talk about it probably, maybe even on a different buck. I mean, I saw probably the biggest buck I've ever seen in Kansas this today, morning. This yeah. morning on public. Yeah. I mean, uh, I texted you guys and said mega giant. And if yeah. I say that, it's right. It's yeah. big. Yeah. Mega giant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, was, so, yeah. So I guess I, in fairness, you know, I, I keep, we can't say for sure the quality has gone. It seems like from the cameras we run on our leases specifically, because you can't run cameras on public anymore, that yeah. we don't have as many big deer. I mean, we have old deer. Mm -hmm. uh, but in I mean, truthfully, we didn't run this any year cameras. we didn't run any cameras. Yeah, we went in completely I, I, blind. Being here this year was like a, kind of a second to the Illinois farm was kind of a big, occupied a lot of our mind space. Or, sure. You know, and then we're like, well, we drew Kansas. Shoot. We so, didn't think yeah. we were going to draw <laughs> either. Well, we were getting this like, you got to, you have to go. If you draw a Kansas stack, oh, yeah, yeah, you got to yeah. go because you, go, you might not draw next year or, you know, or with the way things are going right. the following. Right. You know? And coming on, like I said, no cameras. Just oh, yeah. No we're cool. totally on. We still don't have any idea other than what we've seen. So you saw, like you're saying is 180 this morning yeah all over maybe bigger i don't know i mean it, the biggest i mean given i put a I put a arrow in the shoulder of a 180 mm -hmm. you know six years ago uh and different types of frames on these deer but this deer i literally think his g2s and threes were 13 to 14 inches yeah wow. um that's, you know that's my water buck from last year monster <laughs> i mean it was monster yeah and i mean it was um it was perfect because we were we were bitching back and forth. I'm like, dude, this may be the worst Kansas yeah, like yeah, week yeah, we've yeah. had since I've ever started hunting Kansas. And um, I think I texted and I was like, who see who saw a deer? And literally when I texted that, it, this doe cruises through, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. Then the spike cruises through, which I think was one of the deer you saw tonight, oh, right? Yeah. And then it was like, um, I guess it was like eight twenty. And I could hear deer coming down from the creek, or which is now dry. The other thing is they haven't got rain out here in months. Like it is bone dry. Um, deer comes up, and it's a, it's another um, uh, six point, and then there's an eight point um, behind them. Probably both two year olds, I would assume. And they literally start working right up to me, and I kind of glance over my shoulder. I've got CRP basically uh, behind me. And there's a doe just feeding like in the CRP. And I'm like, okay, and, like that's, you know, they're, they're like, there's a reason these guys are all traveling together. And she kind of kept looking back, but to be honest, because of the way the trip has gone, like I, I didn't expect much. Yeah. Right. I, I, and you know, I figured if anything, like maybe there's a good buck with her, but like, I didn't, I didn't expect much and I didn't hear anything either, which was really r weird. Like I didn't hear any like, you know, movement behind me. And so those deer are like 20 yards, like, uh, just upwind from me. And I kind of look back over my shoulder and I'm like, Oh my God, that is a giant. And he's just standing with this doe and he's, he's like immediately the first thought was like mega giant. Like it was yeah. just, and, and the second thought was like, it's going to happen. Like I, it, this is going to work out. Cause it's, I'm sitting at the corner of, of, um, private and public and she is, coming down the fence line on my side of the public which pinches down pretty tight to where i'm at and like you know gives me anywhere between a 50 and 30 yard shot depending on how tight they pinch and um i'm watching this but like just in awe in fact at one point i do fumble with my phone because i was like i have to get a picture of this thing and i i didn't i biffed it uh <laughs> like terribly yeah i took like four pictures of my pocket um you know so in the future just video that i know yeah thanks Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I video it tonight. Um, 
it was two year old. So, and uh, so I'm watching him, and sh- she then turns and she cuts the corner and she starts going back away from me the way I came in. Now I'm probably a half mile from the truck, but I mean it's thick. Like I, I found that out coming in in the morning. I I tripped over a deadhead. What literally? What are the odds of that? In the pitch black. I'm walking through the woods and I fall on my face. Like I throw my bow like out trying to save myself. I tripped all the way. Yeah, all the way. Oh, wow. And I turn around. <laughs> Is it a light? Yeah, my green light. You see it? Uh, what, the deadhead? Yeah. No, I, I fell and I turned around and I put my head on and there's this like eight point just like looking at me like, what the hell? Recent? <laughs> no, probably like a year or two ago. Wow. Pretty yeah. eaten up. But I'm like, dude, we can't find a shed in the daylight. Like how did I trip over this thing at, in dark? <laughs> So, but it's, it's super thick up there. So when she turns and I, I was, I was telling you this at lunch, it's kind of like instinct takes over. It's like, how am I going to get this deer into bow range? Uh, I told you, well, we talked about crossbow. Like, yeah, oh, he would have been yeah, dead. Yeah, I was yeah. smoked him in a heartbeat with crossbow at 60 yards. Um, but it's like, how do I get this deer in bow range? And so when the eight point got with like 10 yards behind me and that big buck turned his head, I just, <laughs> And he whips around and he starts like stiff like and right to the. Do you, right do you use the tube for that? No, I use my mouth. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's like how you did. Tube? Um, I think the tube is louder. Yeah. But Literally. being that close, I didn't need it, and I didn't want any movement, mm. so I just straight mouthed on it. I like the tube. Yeah. And um, he. I mean, he's the, and that that a point was like shit, dude. I, wasn't me, man. Like, I didn't do it. Who did that? You know? And it was perfect. Like, it was how I was going to pull him in. He walked about, he got to probably 52, 53 yards, and his doe bolted. And as soon as she bolted, he bolted. And I co- I watched him from for 10 minutes from the stand. There was now four different bucks, like, satelliting. And he would just come out and push them. Come out and push them, then he'd go back in. And so I eventually said, screw it, I got to make something happen. I jumped out of the stand went up to the line, got eyes on him at 70 yards, belly curled down the hill, and just started making an how, approach. How long after like you lost sight of him did you get down? No, I saw him. I saw him the whole time. I could see him oh, from the stand. Did you see him bed down, or you just saw him? He was standing above that doe, and he was just pushing those ones out. Really? And you decided to get down? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You thought there was no chance he was coming He over. was going the other way. Okay. She was going the other way. And you were going to get down and chase him. <laughs> I was going to chase him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As soon as he, as soon as I saw how he was pushing them, and then he would go back in and push them and go back yeah. in, I was like, I gotta, I gotta make something happen. So yeah, I got down and I went, and I got eyes on him again when I was at the right at the corner where they were. I got eyes on him, and at this point, I don't see any satellite bucks, and I just see him standing in there, and I could just see like just rack turning in there, and I, you know, I assume she was either bedded or like just feeding, like milling around, like right behind him. And at one point I saw him turn and like, look like he was kind of walking away from me. And that's when I got on my belly and just skirted the whole way across that field to get down below so that I was out of vision. And I did like, I don't know, like every 10 yards, I would like run real fast and like, like just to make it sound like it was Mm -hmm. a buck coming. And then I would stop and just wait to see if he would come back out. Yeah. And I mean, I was, I was, I pretty quickly, I was probably within 35 yards of them, but I couldn't see them because I was down further. Just, I was trying to also play my wind, which was not optimum for how I needed to stalk them. And at one point, you need a periscope, is what you need. To I needed, so, uh, yeah, hold it up over top of it. So you can <laughs> yeah. look across. I needed Yoder's drone <laughs> to find that damn thing. Yeah. Um, at one point, I looked down across the dry creek bed and I saw one of the satellite bucks. I'm thinking when I was belly crawling down, they pushed her down back to where they came from. And that's why that satellite buck was over there. Um, So I went in and sat there tonight and saw two two two-year-olds. I don't think either of them were in that that satellite group that I saw um, this morning. I don't think you could have done anything differently, right? I mean, you could try a can, but I mean, he already had a hot dough. Yeah, I mean, I could have, you know... I could have just let it play out and see if he would have just like slowly walked away or if they would have bedded down or did something different. I just, I think they did what they were doing. Like you saw, yeah. they, they went in there for a while. He fended off until she was ready to move and then they moved. I really, if, if those two, uh, two year olds didn't come underneath me, cause they kind of flanked them out, um, upwind basically. I think if those two bucks weren't there, she would have went through that pinch. 
but because they kind of flanked her and she saw them, they were right under my stand. Mm -hmm. I think she was like, eh, I need to go back this way. And that's what made her change direction around that fence. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, what a giant though. I mean, uh, just a magnum. That's wild. Yeah. <laughs> it was literally the, the mindset. It was eight 30, you know, and we had texted back and forth. It was the mindset of like, yep, that's why I'm going to come here. Yeah. yeah. Well, the biggest deer the rest of us have seen a bit. Well, I guess, yeah, Jerry saw one from. Well, yeah. Dad, yes, I thought. Yeah, well, I have seen bigger yeah. bucks than I have, I guess. Yeah, we saw, you saw probably a 150 that yeah. Yeah. last night. Last night it was. Yeah, but that one that locked up just mm -hmm. forever. Yeah. So and then I mean, there was yeah. that nine that was limping. Well, and I don't know what, you saw a big one this morning. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't know. They just, they're not doing what they normally do. It's like, it's just it's weird something. Yeah. Well, they're, I mean, this is as like locked down as I've ever seen, like, you know, and you confirmed it this morning, like to actually see them locked down. I mean, that's, that's what they're doing right, right now. Yeah. Right they're now. just, and there's, yeah. when you but find, like I said, there's find one, there's four or five of them. Yeah. It's, all, it's crazy because there's all these satellite bucks just hanging around and it's like, yeah, it's weird. I don't, um, like if you think about it back home, like I don't see like a ton of satellite bucks except uh -huh. for like the first mm -hmm. couple does in Asterisk. Yeah. Like when yeah. the first doe or two Starts. comes in asterisk, that's then it's like, you know, every buck in the neighborhood is in there. They're all over top. But when you're yeah. at peak estra cycle, I feel like it's like, oh, that buck's locked down with that doe. And I don't see anybody else around them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It's it's the between the weather, the the timing that we have on that. Um, I don't know if it's again, we talked about seeing good buck sign, but I really think that there's something up with the deer numbers. It just doesn't seem as as high as they usually are. Um I mean, I mean, dad, there's one central saying, location. Oh, we're seeing I mean, 30 some does. Yeah. But. I mean, I'm seeing a ton of does up at the 80 and it's just like, it's amazing that none of them are ready to go, you know, yeah. to get chased. And, but you got most other places, like I always said, all the years I've been coming here, when I leave, I've seen more bucks than does. Yep. Not Unless I'm at the 80 yeah. because just that sanctuary behind there, Bernie's, that's where they just all hang out. I mean, it really comes down that most of this area is like, you know, you're just looking for the one buck. Right. Like this morning, I didn't need to see any other deer but that deer. You know, and that's yeah. that's the one that matters. Boy, you know, the chances of tripping on them like that in, in public, like there's so much habitat. Just the spots that I've been this week. I wasn't even going to go there. We had no idea. We, You and I have been bouncing around every day. Every day. Yeah. yeah. This time of night, we're like, what are we doing? Where are we morning? going tomorrow? Like, you know, stands are in the truck. Like, I've been hanging a lot in the dark and going. Which way, I hate. Way. Yeah. Honestly, I'm kind of, it's coming on to for me a yeah. little bit. Yeah. I've done pretty well in the dark. I've three times now. I've been like, <laughs> once it gets daylight, I'm like, yeah, this was the tree. I, I mean, like, yeah. we, we talked about it a little bit. I, I put two sticks on a tree that if I had actually got up in it, I would have had a shot at that deer today. <laughs> and and no, it was just no. this old gnarly bur oak that like, it was one of those ones you can't get your arms around. So you're yeah, trying to toss too big. <laughs> and it's getting light. Yeah. And I got two. And when I got the second one on, I basically got there and I was like leaned backwards because it just the way the tree was. And I'm like, yeah. this is stupid. And yeah. so I, I pulled it down and I moved to this spot, which I really like, but it was like, I, I would have had a shot at him wow. for sure. You know, like like in hindsight, did you look at that tree on the way out? Like, you think yep. you could have got a tree in there, a stand in there? Um, yeah. If I wasn't just rushed. Yep. Well, and I was already frustrated because I just beat Dude, you need like to, a jungle like, the entire way in. Like, in the morning, I could tell you get frustrated. Like you get mad, and I know the feeling. Yeah. Like you start sweating and stuff. It's like you. That's well, yeah. It was the like opposite of a successful a half morning. Half mile thing. in through like jungles I where know, I'm like, yeah. I know, Ugh. I know. Dude, I for whatever reason that spot that I hunted this morning and last night. When I went in there in the daylight, it was loud. And yeah. then when I came out at night, it was loud because I just, you know, I just bulldozed right through it. I was just like, I'm getting yeah. out of here. And then, but this morning, I fully anticipated. I was like, it's going to be loud. It's going to be like not, not pretty. I just, deer trails, I was just was tucking yeah. right in. I mean, it was stealthy. Yeah. And then coming out, it was loud. Loud. And, and I was just like, boy, I've, at night here, you're just more in tune with like, you can find them deer trails mm -hmm. a little better. And you just, you're like, oh, here they are. You yeah. Know, stick to this. Yeah. No, I mean it. I mean, I still got hung before having to stand in a bow on your shoulders like, yeah. like doesn't help. Well, and either, what, but. yeah, and it just like I said, it was one of those. It like just a little bit smaller of a tree, and I would have got in it. But it was it was beefy. Bummer. I know. In hindsight. Yeah. So. Well, one thing, the eighty all the soybeans is gonna go away tomorrow. Ugh. 
They yeah, so we brought all the equipment in tonight, and they actually started. And I thought they were doing the field I was in, yeah. but they were started the field next door. Yeah. But he only made like four trips around, and then parked it, and that was it. So it's the only standing beans around. That's why there's so many deer in it. Yeah. But it'll be gone. You'll have a, a morning hunt there, and then it'll be gone. Yeah. Yeah. You can hunt there tomorrow morning. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you see deer in that field when you're driving in in the morning? A few. Oh yeah. And then they yeah. pop and right then, back out. They, they run, but they turn around. Uh, an hour later, they'll come all right back out. I probably did. I did see a three-year-old on the, the way back, driving back. Did you? Side of the road, yeah. And actually, right out here, I saw another two-year-old. We saw a three-year-old with a doe up there the other morning. Yeah. yeah. Right in the corner. That's the, kicker, the kicker buck. That's when he saw in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dad's got a sights on a three-year-old, right? Yeah. He's, yeah. He's got that cool I don't kicker. Know. No, it's the, the, no, it's the lactite. The, the lactite. Oh, the two-year-old. Yeah, the yeah. two-year-old. <laughs> no, yeah, I, got, I got a deer that has this uh, real freaky-looking stalactite coming off the left side. It's got like, I don't know. I feel like we've given you our blessing. I don't know what we, what we're waiting know. Well, he we didn't show up. Now yeah. that you can kill him, he's like, he's not, yeah. he's, he's, not coming he's, around he's come now. in twice now, but I mean, it's so freaky. Uh, and I like that junk stuff on the, on the box. Yep. So, well, um, let's switch gears a little bit. I think one of the things that we wanted to talk about just cause I know people have asked about it is hearing maybe a little bit more about your all's background and getting into hunting. And then that obviously transitioning into, how Jared and I basically got into hunting. So, um, you want to go first? Yeah, fine. I'm All sure. right. I mean, I basically started that. I mean, I hunted with my uncle for a while, and but he was more into fishing. But I mean, it, it kind of got me started. Would that have been in like what, like early seventies? Oh, yeah, probably somewhere right. I there. mean, did you start when you were able to hunt, like at twelve well, or thirteen? Probably not twelve. I was probably about sixteen when I started. Really. Okay. And uh, so, I mean, we always went you know, first day of buck season and stuff like that. I never really got into any other type of hunting or anything like that. And then, of course, when I met your mother, her whole family, everybody, cousins, uncles, every brothers, everybody hunted. So that kind of got me more mm -hmm. into hunting. So we went to camp. We did that for many, many, many years. You know mm -hmm. that. You even went up to the camp. It's awesome. And uh, But then I was looking for more of a challenge. And then that's when I was working with Louis Martin. Mm-hmm. And he was an archery hunter. And so him and I, I actually was working for him. So every morning we would go hunting on this little farm in Penn Township. And uh, so we'd go out for about an hour or two in the morning, then we'd go work. And uh, we actually <laughs> built our tree stands in his garage out of black pipe and angle iron and aluminum <laughs> signs, like stop signs. And stuff. Actually, mine's probably still in the tree. It probably is. <laughs> it's now meshed with the Were tree. Are still in stop signs? Well, no, but I mean, then I got more and more into the uh, archery. I love that because it was always, like I said, it's like somebody coming in your living room and hide and you come home and not know they're there. That's the same way with the bucks. I mean, you got to get close. And back then I had a bear white tail that was wood limbs. I actually wrapped the wood limbs with it's camouflage com duct tape. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, wood limbs. yeah, it was one of the first ones. The I, original bear. I used three fingers with the leather, you know, the leather fingers. Yeah. And it was had wheel a, based, right? Not yeah. cams, right? right. right? Yeah. Just wheel based. Had uh, just a little rest on it for the arrow. Used a big, thick double X 75 Eastern arrows. Yeah. Um, killed a lot of buck with that, with that bow. I mean, nothing more than 30 yards. Cause you couldn't really get a good shot there. But, uh, and then it was just something I enjoyed doing. And then when he came along, when he was finally, I mean, you went with us up to camp like, mm -hmm. when you were nine and nine 10. and 10. Yeah. Right. And then finally we started with shotgun with slugs. Mm -hmm. Then we went to the rifle mm -hmm. and then we got into the bow. I we think started. I was 14 when I shot my first bow bo or bow deer. Yeah. Uh, that was when, yeah, he was on one side of the field. I was on the other side of the field and I'm watching these two doe walking up the wood line right to where he's sitting going to stand right on the wood line and they pretty much get past, just past him I don't know, 10 12 yeah. yards and i'm watching and i'm thinking well did he shoot what's he doing and they kind of just took a couple steps back and they're just standing there and i'm thinking okay shoot shoot well next to you know, the one deer just lays down <laughs> and the other one's looking at it like and i'm thinking oh okay he did shoot he did get it and then finally Realized that he did shoot. That was his first doe with a bow. Was it before that that I was slinging uh, arrows through the soybean at them? 
a different deer? Uh, that might have been, yeah, earlier. That yeah. shot like three times at him, and it was like yeah. you could hear him just buzzing through the soybean. Is it the same story we see his e cigarette or his regular? No, it would have been a regular cigarette. No, my, my, that was like the because he had killed. He actually killed like a really big mature buck the year before, the one that fell in the pond. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, this thing was awesome. It had big four on one side, like kind of non-typical other. And at that point in Pennsylvania, I mean, we were killing one-year-olds. Yeah. And mm-hmm. this deer was yeah. probably four or five. I mean, just a brute. In fact, mm-hmm. he he died in this pond. And we had to fish him out with the tractor. We had to get a backhoe to get him out. The yeah. farmer's pond, yeah. And wow. um, then the next year... Like he had a stand that the stop sign stand in one patch of woods, and I'm directly across in like a two by four stand, probably that yeah. we built. And like, yeah, the vivid memories of like a 14 year old kid is like seeing the glow of my dad's cigarette, like <laughs> in the mornings. And then I think that, that it was like opening morning, literally, like you put the cigarette in the V of the tree and shot, shot the six deer. point. Yeah. And then you're like, yeah, that's how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> A little celebratory uh, <laughs> rip there. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, with his first year, your, that was your first year hunt when you shot that buck we were putting drives on. Yeah. And I told him, you got a shotgun with slugs. So you'll pass up more deer than you'll see. Because, you know, they'll lay behind a log. They'll lay in a ditch. And they don't move. And you just walk right by them. So we were putting drives on up at camp. And they were you. And Corey had gone out in front. My Corey had oh, gone yeah. out in front, and it was Yummer and I walk because Yummer killed a buck. Right, right. Um, and so we call him Uncle Yum, but he's Tim. Uh, and so it's him and I walking on this road. I'm bas- we're flanking. There's there's posters out front flanking, and then you guys are driving mm-hmm. through the middle. And we're it's like an old logging road, right? And and again, my uncle had already like sprinted down there. We're like, hey, dude, you mm-hmm. got to get down there and get get posted. And so we're walking through and like, I don't know. It was just weird. Like I remember looking and I'm like, I was like, Hey, there's a deer like right here, like yeah. laying behind this log. And then I was like, I remember it's just it? like, <laughs> I remember it just like ducking its head enough. Cause at that point it didn't matter. It was like, if it was antlers, it was antlers. It was antlers. Yeah. And yeah, it yeah. ducked its head and I was like, it has a rack. And Yummer was like, shoot it. And it boom, <laughs> boom, boom. Like I said, like, you'll shoot right through a log with just slugs. Blowing, blowing through. And this thing ran. And I come up around. You could actually stand on the top and look down two valleys and see the blood trail. And but a couple of people came from the camp up the valley, and I think they pushed him too hard, and he just disappeared. Gone. The Never blood found trail him. stopped and just disappeared. But then the next day in that island in the field, we found a big gut pile. blood and gut pile. Somebody apparently found them and good. Took them. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't think it was coyotes. No, no, I mean, like, no, somebody, got it, no, like it gutted gutted deer. somebody got it. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, but, and that deer bled like crazy. But he was like, you know, I said, you know, when we were looking for it, he was like, oh, well, that's okay. We'll go ahead. And I'm like, okay, you know, you don't understand. It doesn't happen that easy all yeah. the time. Well, by the end of that that night and the next day, we looked a little bit more. Then he started to realize, oh, I'm not going to find this deer. No, you're not going to find this deer. And that was my gone. first, like, my first yeah. hunting experience was losing a buck. Yeah. You, you were 12? 12. 12. 12. 12. Yeah. All of yeah. ours was, dude. All yeah. mine I mean, was too. Fir- first experience was losing that buck. And it was like, um, you know, and again, I'd, I'd sat with him on stuff and experienced some success, some not, but it was like, yeah, I mean, it was like, okay, well, you know, that yeah. sucks, but like, let's yeah. just get back at it. It don't, and then, it don't happen that easy. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't kill. Um, I remember that sucking. I remember my first year that I shot. I remember like the blood trailing. I was like, this isn't fun. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. I remember being like, this is not. I didn't understand. Yeah. I was he like, did. well, why are we? Why yeah. are we still remember going? That? I do remember that. The deer I shot at the Robinsons. Yeah. I remember sh- yeah. I shot it, and then it was like. We started blood. It was we didn't. I don't think have any idea where I shot it, or I don't remember if we found the arrow or what. But no, we, okay. I remember. I remember the blood trail being like, "This is not fun." I, d- I didn't enjoy that yeah. part of it, and then we didn't find it. Oh, there was snow on the ground. You remember? No, was there? Yeah. And do you remember what I made you do with the heart? No, that was the doe. Well, that was the doe. I'm talking about that buck. Do you remember the buck that I shot? The, it was like opening day of the first day that I was 12. That was the first. Oh, okay. Year that yep. I ever shot it out of that apple orchard. Remember I remember that. I'm sorry, Jeremy. Yeah. I didn't mean to come. No, 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 you're no, fine. Right. But, but so, anyways, I mean, we got into archery a lot and that. But I just tried to get him involved in a lot more, you know, outdoor. We did a lot of fishing. Mm-hmm. But and like I said, we got him his bow, first bow, one Christmas, and that's where he started the you know, archery hunting. And then I think a couple Christmases after something, we got you the muzzle loader, the flintlock, yeah. And uh, 
So, I mean, he pretty much hunted from September to January. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was out constantly. You shot bucks with the muzzleloader, with bow, with gun, you mm-hmm. know. And so it was those camps that was like your main the thing that you got. So we we look forward yeah. to we had our deer camp um for anybody listening like in Pennsylvania it was it was Mahaffey, Pennsylvania. Right. So that's where our original deer camp was, clear, like clear from the county. Woods? Um it was old strip mine. Well actually we were Glen Campbell. Yeah. Well first Mahaffey, then Glen right. Campbell. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah, it's south, south Indiana of County. Yeah, just no, Indiana right. County. Oh, of the Big Woods. Yeah, yeah. 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 South okay. of the Big Woods. And um so yeah, I mean we we kind of cut our teeth, but that was gun season. Right. Bow season, we we hunted back home in Westmoreland County. Right. Um, yeah. That's that's all we hunted. We hunted. It was like a fifty-two acre farm behind Penn Trafford High School. Yeah, people here and say there that was all the time. always always big deer back here. I can remember sitting back there. We used to sit up by a telephone pole. That was before you had nine thousand cameras out, and we would go up in the evening. We sit by this telephone pole in the middle of the field, and just watch the deer coming out, and you know, and there was times where. And it started coming out, and each one that came out was bigger and bigger and bigger, and it was, like, amazing. You know, it was like being here. There was always a, a bruiser running around, and uh, that's basically how we did our scouting. But then again, first day would come, we'd sit in the stand, and I'll see a deer. <laughs> yeah, Bean, it, beans would turn, and it would yeah. be. I mean, it was just amazing how no. one minute there's 30 deer in the field, and the next day there's not a deer in the field. And that was in the summer you were sitting by that? Yep. Yeah. And then we, we would bow hunt. Um you know, we bow hunt all of, you know, October and, and part of November there. I mean, that was the only place we had to hunt. Right, right. At one point in time, I got, it was, I think in high school, I got access to the church property. Yeah. We, the cemetery property. Yeah, we did hunt up there for a little bit. But I mean, not much. I mean, that was bow hunting. We, I don't know if we ever bow hunted up at camp or anything. No, nah, that was all rifle. That was, much. so it was just gun season that we go up yeah. and really it was the first two or three days. And then we were back home again. But, I mean, I always felt that the camp that we had up there, I mean, there was time we had, what, 12, 15 people there. And it was the experience of being in the camp with everybody. You hear the same deer stories year after year after year. It didn't matter. They all sounded great. You know, so it was just everybody being yep. together for deer camp. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but then you got to the point where some people it, it just, you know, maybe not as serious as the hunters as some others. And it kind of just breaks it down from there, you know. But the experience of deer camp was just phenomenal. We just loved doing that, you know. Mm. And now it just seems like that's lost. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. We I just mean, don't have that as much as you we used sold, to. We sold that camp, um, I don't know, a few years ago, several years ago. Um, and it was because people weren't really going up. I mean, I had moved was away. Was uncle that still owned that? Uh, he did. And then he sold it. They sold it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so, yeah, we just. You know, it was kind of like now what? Was there property with it, or was it no. all? It was all public. Nah. It was all public. Yeah, yeah. State game lands around. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of state game lands we hunted. There was a lot of like um, cool company ground and stuff like that. That was yeah. basically you could just hunt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what we kind of grew up. You know. So I mean, basically, just gave him all the tools he needed to learn to to, to hunt and do all the different things with you know, same as I did. Now, when he went off to Mississippi State my hunting experience kind of fizzled out because I mean, just no fun going on by yourself all the time. And, uh, so then when he moved back here, it started, you know, oh, here we are now coming to Kansas. Mm-hmm. But like I always said, remember when he was 12 years old, Sunday night, we couldn't wait for, you know, uh, Buckmasters, Jackie Bushman coming on, you know, it's like, Oh, this is great. And I said, here we are doing what Jackie was doing back then going to Kansas, going to Illinois, yeah. you know, shooting the big bucks and that it just, yeah. It's awesome. So I kind of gave him the, the base, the grounds to start, but I can't take any of the credit for where he is now for the hunting that he does now. He's puts a lot of time. I, t- I take most of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's well, both of you guys. I mean, you guys have just, the day I seen you get in a kayak, go down a river to get to a spot that hunted there. <laughs> Covered I in said, flex that sail. Guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy is serious hunter. I yeah. mean, when you do something like that to get into a spot, that's your serious spot. Me, I'd have been like, nope, that's all right. I'll find somewhere else to go. <laughs> well, it's kind of funny. I mean, because... Doesn't mean a good hunter. It just means I'll do anything to get to it. Well, yeah, and exactly. I, we talk about it a and lot. you just do all the, every time. You just go walk a mile back into the woods or you go here, you go there. 
you know, with the awning, that makes it really nice because otherwise you get lost. Oh, yeah. yeah we would have yeah. no idea. Yeah. Where we're but going. with the awning, that makes it so nice to be able to go in places like that. And you do. You, you know, like, well, where I was sitting earlier this week, I wasn't seeing nothing. So he gave up his spot, basically, well, not exact spot, but the field for me to hunt on. And he's running and gunning wherever, you know, the yeah. same as you did this week. I ran know? into a booner. Yeah. Yep. I mean, we just yeah. get the job done. That's well, what it is. I think what's kind of interesting about it, and we've talked about this a lot with like the newer generation of hunters is like it, to, to your point earlier, like I, I just lived in the woods. Like if, if mm-hmm. it was muzzle, like, especially after Christmas, when I was off school, like I would take my flintlock out. I, I couldn't tell you, I would shoot at five deer a day probably with that flintlock. Oh, there was the yeah. one time where he came home and said, I'm out of powder. Yeah. I said, what? Yeah, right said, I'm out of powder. I said, how many times did you shoot? He goes, I don't know. I just put on miles and, <laughs> and tried to kill a bunch of doe because we were in we were in urban areas. So we had like unlimited yeah. doe tags. Yeah. But it, it it that kind of hunting of just being out on the ground and learning everything from that, when you take that and put it in a great state like Kansas, I mean, you just know what to do. All of a sudden, like there are in some cases deer do deer things where like where we hunt most of the time, those deer don't do what they're supposed to do because they're pressured out the, you know, ass basically. Um, so it's, it's a weird thing when you come out here and I tell this to a lot of East coast guys are like, Oh, I don't know about going to public land in Illinois or Kansas or Missouri. And I was like, listen, you're going to run into pressure. That's, that's hunting in general anymore. But if you can hunt and be successful and know what you're looking for in a state like Pennsylvania or New York or West Virginia or whatever it is and come out here, dude, you're going to be successful. It's, it's, yeah. we- it's weird what it does to the thought process. Cause it doesn't like nullify it completely, but it does like, I mean, I've hunted you know, at least a half dozen spots this week that I felt like I was like, boy, if this wasn't public land, like this would be the spot. Yeah. You know, because it's like it's an obvious transition. It, you know, the, the way that's trained funnels the deer there and stuff. It's like, but I just know that other people it's been pressured. have known that, you know, and that's yep. so that onyx that you mentioned, there's a, it's a double sided yeah. you know, double edged yeah. sword because yeah. it's like anybody can look at that. And say, oh, right. boy, look at this pinch here. I, I go back to that. Even today, like tonight, I went and hunted a spot. In fact, I walked past it in the dark the other day, but I marked it as I was going because look at all these broke looking branches. Right. Look at all these, right. you know, sign here. And I was like, this would be really tough to get to. And I was like, I had this, you know, sneaky way that I was kind of getting in there. Sure enough, I went in there tonight with a lone wolf, you know, over my shoulder. I was like, I'm intent on hanging a stand there. Look up, there's a ladder stand. Ladder stand. Somebody's got a ladder stand right there. <laughs> and I was like, I guess I'll hunt that. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so I yeah. Saying tonight. yeah. <laughs> it, it is weird though. I mean, it's, um, and that's, what's kind of crazy about it is if you look at the progression over the time we've been here is like before, you know, I, I'll be honest, like in that first year or two, I didn't hunt hard at all. And there just were bucks everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like I was just, you know, I killed the first year I killed, I was literally, I killed them at seven 30. The first day I was ever in a tree stand in Kansas. And they were all pre hung. We had all pre hung sets. We come out like in the yep. summer and we're like, this seems good. Yep. Put it up and there were deer there. Yeah. And so it just, it, the pressure has really, and it's, it's not just Kansas, right? It's all the States. We talk about it in Ohio a lot. We talk about it everywhere. Pennsylvania, the pressure has just continued to make, especially mature deer harder to find and mm-hmm. see. It's not that they're not there. That's why we see the buck sign. And so we see, so rub down here. It's as big as your thigh. Like, there are yeah. mature bucks oh, here, out there. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. they're just nocturnal. They don't want to move. They don't want to move during right. daylight hours. Right. Especially, well, especially on public. I mean, I don't know. I mean, the the residents will probably tell you that it's non-resident pressure that's causing absolutely a lot is. of the issues. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that is probably true. I mean, between leasing and, and buying land, I think that's what's displacing a lot of the people. Just the whatever you want to call it, like the, the organic hunting uh, demographic that was here before. It was, it was primarily residents and, and some people that would come out of state and they would hunt public. And it was probably great. In 2013, when before, I put in for an archery tag... That was like, I think this, this area, they had like 1,800 to 2,000 tags available. In 2013, when I put in, there were seven to 800 left over after lottery. Mm-hmm. Now there are two to 3,000 over, over the lottery, lottery yeah. allotment. And it's just, that's in 10 years that that's happened. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, it doesn't sound like much, but I mean, the amount of pressure that no, comes it in. It sounds like a lot. Well, and, and especially when you look at what leasing has done in this area, because what leasing has done is it's displaced the residents who had permission, knock permission or no permission, to public. 
So what was really good public and very fairly unpressured public mm-hmm. is now hammered, not just by non-residents, I mean, what, but hammered by residents because right. they don't have anywhere yeah, to hunt. What right. was happening before leasing? Like, I assume the demand didn't just like overnight. You know what I mean? There had to have been like a growing demand that at some point leasing answered, you know, the question to. Well, I think that you had residents who just had permission, like you knew so-and-so. Yeah. And so even if I came up or said, not, hey, I mean, talk about it, guys would just go. Yeah. Like, could I could. Hey, can I hunt your phone? Oh, no. So and so's hunting. It didn't matter. He wasn't paying any money. He's a right, friend of a friend. Right, and yeah. just Let him on there. And so those Kansas residents were hunting that. And then your non-residents were just hunting public, essentially. OK, well, there's probably far fewer of us. Yeah, there. Oh, there definitely are. But but they're just hunting public. And so think about it this way is. Now those non-residents are starting to lease up every piece of land they can get 80 here, 120 here, 300 here. I mean, dude, it's to, it's to a point where even you and I, like we know some people and we're like, I wouldn't trust half the, you know, it's like if somebody's given up a lease, like there must be something wrong with it. Well, and, <laughs> and think about all the, because most of the leasing is from non-residents, right? Sure. So think of all the non-residents, which is a small number leasing a bunch of properties. Now think is of, it? yeah, you know, I would say fact. So. Uh, I, no, I don't know for a fact. I'd be I would interested just to know. Yeah, but, I, I feel like residents probably not retaliation is not the right word, but in response to non-residents leasing, they probably feel the need to also. Well, like, oh, I would say that most residents, especially in these small towns, don't have the finances to do it. Sure, they don't have the finances to compete against. Frankly, guys like us who would say, "Yeah, I'll pay you twenty bucks an acre." Sure. Um, but then think about the number of residents who are here all the time that are now displaced on the public. So it's not one week a year that these non-residents come in and hunt public. It's every weekend or multiple times during the week that these residents are hunting public. It's just, I think there's more hunter time on the public lands here. Mm-hmm. And that's what's causing this pressure. And I don't think it just affects the public. I think it affects these private pieces. Like we have a lot of pri- our public that join our leases. And I think our leases are affected because those public places are are hammered. Not in a good way either. Yeah. Hmm. I- it, hmm. I have a hard time putting my finger on like, you know, cause I talked to like, you know, Trav, our taxidermist and stuff and try to figure out like what, you know, what's coming in, like what's the mentality of guys and stuff. And it's like, uh, like in one sense, it seems like, yeah, you know, like, you know, assigned Q- QDM quality deer management, sure. you know, th- like just the, the mindset of guys willing to, to pass on, you know, two, two, three, even four year old deer to get them. Right, to, right. You know, it seems like that's, that's growing or, or it had been anyways. But it almost seems like in the in the past five years, like I don't know if that is the case. Like it just seems like, at least per what we're hearing from the, the locals out here, they're like, guys just want to shoot a buck anymore. Yeah, yeah, a lot of guys. Well, I mean, we ran into multiple residents last year that were shooting four corns, right? And and no offense, but we know there's a lot of people that are coming in from poorer states in terms of deer quality that are shooting the first 140 inch three year old they see. Which per this week, I don't know if I can blame them. Sure. You hunt a whole week and you don't see a 140. When you finally see one, you probably want to shoot it. So right. it, it, it is, if you talk to the locals who are very much in tune with the hunting quality, they will say it's amazing what's happened in 10 years. Oh, yeah. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just crashed. And that like for a state like Iowa, if you look at Iowa and Kansas, those are the two quote last good deer states, right? Kansas is now, I bet a distant third probably from Ohio, in my opinion. And we know the problems there. What, really? You'd say, oh, that absolutely. Bad? Look at the giants that are being killed in Ohio. I mean, they're still killing giants in Kansas, too, though. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I just, don't know. I think Kansas is still better than Ohio. I don't know, man. There's I, more, do. I think there's more bucks in Ohio. I do. Right now. More there's more hunters in Ohio. in Ohio, for sure. That would be the Why downfall. Would you say that more bucks in Ohio? From what? I mean, this well, yeah, this is a weird week, though. I don't, we can't use this week as a right, no. you know look well, at look at last year. I mean, you had two two shooters, and yeah, I don't know if there necessarily are more bucks, but I think there's the amount of deer habitat in Ohio is much less than in Kansas. So the amount of bucks are packed significantly in, less, packed yeah. in tighter yeah. in Ohio. That's why you can see how many mature it's, bucks. It's on overwhelming your farm. out here. I mean, how much habitat there is. Like some of the stuff I was in today, I was like. You hundreds know, of thousands hundreds of acres. Thousands of, yeah, exactly. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of just CRP and draws and ditches and right. river no bottoms. Of it, yeah. yeah, I mean, they could be anywhere. Mm-hmm. Like this little piled up island, they could he could have that doe pushed up into. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, we see that one. It was right along the road. Yeah, dagger buck. Yeah, a couple of, last year. It just was With six feet off the road. Yeah, just and it was a mature buck. Yeah, I mean that do that buck to that guy pulled out today. Like he's not far from here, you know. <laughs> it was a giant. Yeah, it's a giant. They kill, they kill them, dude. 
they, they, they're still pulling some big bucks. I mean, out of Ohio, too, for sure. I mean, mm-hmm. there's, yeah, both both states produce great deer. In fact, we, we had a cool conversation today with a new potential think, world record, you know? Well, I was going to say, do you think Ohio is decreasing in quality? I don't know. I mean, do, I'm open to the idea that it's not. You know, our personal experience is that it is, right? Like, our... our do you think your farm has decreased in quality? Yeah, I would say so. What do you think? How long have uh, you had the farm? 2012. Okay, so 10 yeah. years. 10 years. years. And we hunted that before. Yeah. Uh, we owned it. So mm-hmm. I'd say that uh, we definitely have more bucks on the property because of what we've been doing with the timber stand improvement and mm-hmm. the food we put out there. And, I mean, we, we've had, uh, like, the robbers had very few deer. And now there's, what, yeah. three, three-year-olds and four-year-olds running around in there. Sure. We're harvesting them. Yep. Um, and you're, so you're saying like, you know, 2012, 13, like you didn't have three and four year olds. It's, dude, it's, it's, or? it's hard to, it's hard, it's hard to quantify, I think. Cause it's like, you know, all we're going off is memory, not real like fact, you know, yeah, say, yeah, Hey, yeah. here's, you know, Hey, literally there was this many of this, this age class or whatever. But you know, for, for some reason we have like that, that goose buck stands out as like a, I remember that was like a monumental deer for and you guys. And iconic, like, man, we had that deer from three, it passed him at three. Yeah, I Seven, that. eight years, seven years ago, eight years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, made it through to a four-year-old, made it through to a five-year-old. And I was like, yeah, that's what happens, you know? And like, I could never fathom of that happening now, right? It's just like, I fully yeah. expect them to get shot at three. If they make it to four, You've I'm like- it multiple times. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> wow, that's amazing. You know, they made it to four. And we do have some four, you know, yeah. most of them. Good. I'm good. Uh, I'll take one. <laughs> you know, it, so yeah, it just seems like they're, it just seems like guys are more efficient at killing them, which is no surprise. I mean, that's a lot of what we talk okay. about, you know. I'm going to have to. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll rotate next. And then when you come back, you have to talk about your upbringing and hunting. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think guys are just more efficient at killing them, which is a lot of what well, we it's, talk about. It's, well, it, yeah. When, back when I started archery hunting, that was one of the biggest complaints. People would be like, oh, these archery hunters, they get first shot at all these big bucks and blah, blah, blah. They still say that. And I mean, <laughs> there wasn't that many archery hunters no, they don't. out there. Well, crossbow. Well, yeah. yeah. There wasn't that many archery hunters out there until the introduction of the crossbow. When that happened, the archery season just boomed. And um, welcome to the hated club. Yeah, <laughs> it, it did. <laughs> It did. There was not that many archery hunters back then. I mean, yeah. I didn't know too many people that did archery hunt. Well, literally, so if you look at and, the statistics, and uh, you know, most of the state's archery harvest is like seventy percent. So you could say right. you could add a seventy percent to to the archery to the archery season. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the, I I just feel when the crossbow was brought into play, then it just boomed. Because what anybody could anybody could shoot a gun, could shoot a crossbow. I mean, when we were when we started hunting, or when I started hunting, crossbows were legal for what disability only? Disability, yeah. Because I don't think you could even use them as you a kid. You had to actually show your you had, you had a disability, but you couldn't use them as a kid or anything. Uh, you or actually, seen, you yeah. had to actually show your disability. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> they're yeah. like, all right, what? Well, next, yeah, they're, like, next. Box, they're <laughs> like, uh, you've been you've actually just been they're sitting like, underhanded. So asleep. what's wrong with you? <laughs> My hands asleep. I can't feel it. <laughs> but, you know, most states it, it came down it to does this a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it came down to the money. They wanted more. Well, we need to get more hunters. We need, you know, the hunters aren't happy because they say the archers are getting all the big bucks. Well, no, not really. But the archers at that time, we were serious archery hunters and we didn't have trail cameras and stuff, but we did a lot of scouting. I mean, back at that farm, we knew where every deer was, where every deer slept, where every deer that I'd put a drive on that went through the ball field. If you left one gate open, closed the other, they went through the open gate. We just knew that it was, you know, just to spend the time in the woods. And then, like I said, when the crossbow came along, well, the industry just boomed. So people know. wonder where my crossbow hate came from. It's pretty, yeah. pretty yeah. laid out. All right. I'm going to give you one example of a crossbow success. Okay. Okay. We, this, we have a, we have a recent one that we just learned about. Well, this is a, we have a pastor that we allow on our farm. Pastor Don. Pastor Don. We've talked about him. And Pastor Don's mm, 68. Okay. I'm going to guess. Yeah. He can't pull a bow back anymore. Seems like the and, reason you would use a crossbow. And he has limited hunting opportunities yep. because of his job. Mm-hmm. And so he comes out on the farm. Uh, what last year, his, his scope was all 
jiggly and <laughs> I think he completely when he shot we, we followed up the arrow and there was a complete mess well, he's been coming out for what four or five years About now at least four years maybe mm-hmm. five uh, but then he uh, he was successful last year with his crossbow and you know for him to see and it was just a, a little final was it 120 if that a three two three year old, two year old yeah two year old 115 or two year old yeah which he was ex- he was yeah that, that that's that was, what he was there shooting well, yeah. uh, that, uh, that was his trophy but which whatever uh, we gave him free reign we said yeah shoot what you i want. guess my point was you know for him to come out on our farm because we don't do a lot we don't do hardly any gun hunting is that we tried to shoot all of our deer with bows and then to yeah absolutely him the, the, uh, the opportunity well, to get on there with a, a crossbow Oh, I mean, it proves the point. I mean, that's what they're there for. Like he's a guy like him has always been able to use a crossbow. You know, yeah. so so what Jerry's saying is that they opened well, it up what, to. Yeah, what I'm saying is you can't compare to him shooting this deer with his bow to somebody shooting this deer with a crossbow. There's to me, there's no comparison. Yeah. Because with a crossbow, you shoot a hundred yards, you got a scope, you got everything. It's like <laughs> shooting a gun. So. Yeah. To get this with your butt, you got to be a lot closer. I mean, that's just me. So you can't compare. They're not the same. They're different weapons. It's not the same. They're, they're sure. different. So there should be a different season for them. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And do yeah. we talk about trans men yet? Or yeah. are we? No, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get get another, another beer. beer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just one other side of that, though, is I mean, none of us shoot stick bows. I would, I would agree, though, that that, that is yeah. a success. But, He's probably talking about passion. So yeah. I'm yeah. Gonna yeah. Move on yeah. to stick bows. So the stick bow guys probably say, oh, oh they absolutely are shooting yeah. compounds. We have the advantage. Because uh, I mean, I, I hunted with recurve for a couple of years. Yeah. And so, the, and, and you know, say, and now you're getting into. Yeah. And I suck at it. Yeah. Well, but the practice, I mean, still but, suck at it. Well, <laughs> with recurve me, guys, guys say we need our own season. The recurve guys for sure said this when compounds came. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, because they said the same thing. There, there weren't many of us. Yeah. You know, that's way easier. It's all, all right. the same things. Um, and to the point where you know, one of the crossbow arguments is like, well, great, let's let's have a recurve and longbow. Guess what? I would assume the four of us would figure out how to shoot a recurve or longbow right. to take advantage well, of that it, season. It's the same yeah. as you have a gun season, you have a muzzleloader season, yeah. and you have a flintlock season, yeah, which makes it harder. Flintlock. Anybody that's hunting with flintlock realized. You guarantee he's not going to shoot a deer. I mean, it could be 10 yards from you and you still miss him. <laughs> yeah. I, but I think the conversation is way more about access than it is like the deer that are killed when you're talking about the differences in those two seasons. So uh-huh. it's not like, it's not like, oh, you know, compound bows allowed so many more guys to come into the sport. M- maybe it did allow some, but it still has a lot of the same, uh, you know, principle. It requires a right. lot of the lame, same skill. It's obviously it's that, oh, much yeah, easier. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's not like, okay, now we have, there's an overwhelming amount of guys in the sport. It's when, you know, crossbows are that next level of, of, of ease or what, you know, whatever you would say that it's right, like, right. okay, now, now everybody now, now, you know, it's literally 70% of a lot of these archery seasons. And again, it's not the deer that are being killed necessarily. Cause there are still good deer coming out of these States. It's, it's mm-hmm. the access. Well, the it's, bottom line, like he said today, he could have shot that buck with, if he had a crossbow. But would you have the satisfaction, the shakes? Well, I guess maybe you would have the satisfaction. Something that yeah, big. Yeah, I mean, I, I still would have been a like, crossbow versus your. Well, I mean, bow. I would have still appreciated the deer, and and enjoyed the experience. But like, no, I mean, the the reason I'm sitting there with the compound is like it's it's a greater challenge, you know. And that's and I also, uh, I mean, we talked about this. Like, I don't know. I'm not saying that I couldn't pull off a 60 yard shot, but like I. I want that 30 yard and in experience. Like right. you put a mature buck at 30 yards or in you're rattled. Oh yeah. You got to keep yeah. it together. To, and that's, what's cool about it. I mean, that's to be honest. I mean, I know we, we probably, I don't know. We haven't killed a ton of deer with our guns. We no. probably have killed more bucks well, with our oh, bows. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I mean, we always gun hunted just because of the camp atmosphere mainly. And, right. and obviously to take advantage of the seasons, like it, no, most people weren't bow hunting during pennsylvania rifle season especially in the 90s and 2000s but um you know we would get we'd be excited if we killed a buck but like it wasn't the same like emotional enjoyment that you had if you killed well wasn't that i mean i don't know well i'm sure same thing for you guys when anytime i've shot a buck with my bow once i realized i shot hit it and it ran as soon as you get those shakes. It you just start apart. shaking. You know, you don't do that with a rifle. 
I don't know if you do it with a crossbow. I never tried, but I know to this day. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. If, if, I don't, if I don't get the shakes like that, then you know what? I might as well quit hunting. I mean, because that's sure. just, that's like, oh, God. I mean. Well, I mean, it, uh, when I guess you called me when I shot that Illinois buck. And I was rattled. Oh, we always call each other. Yeah. I was rattled. Yeah. I was, uh, just, That's what Margie was like. Did you call me first? I was like, I called Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. I was like, I want to hear you shake. Yeah. 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 That was the first yeah. one to hear. I remember we saw it. It was funny because we saw it on the tram cell cam when it was coming up to Jared. And I'm, he texted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was awesome. And it was early in the morning. I was yeah. like, I called him. I was like, I want to hear you shake. Yeah. <laughs> That's my biggest buck. To, yeah. You know, at the time that was yep. 140 yeah. shape. Yeah, it was insane. But I mean, that's I was losing my at 10 mind yards. That. Yeah. I do not do that. I mean, I'll still every time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it it's in varying, you know, degrees depending on like how it goes down. Like right. when I shot right. this buck the other day, I was weird. It was just like uh, it was. It wasn't this. It wasn't as cold. I'll say that the cold definitely amplifies. Sure. Like it's oh, like yeah. cold yeah. soup on a or yeah. hot soup on a cold day. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that cold, and I was just like. It happened fast. Well, I think too is a lot of it is how how long it takes to, yeah. to pan out. Yeah, I mean you see him coming and you're like, okay, we're we'll gonna get here, and it's like this whole drawn out thing, and you're just, I mean, yeah, the, you're tense. Both and deer, everything. Both deer that I shot this year, I shot that 160 in North Dakota. Same thing. It was like a 30 second encounter. And yeah, it was like it's over, yeah. and it's like I don't even have time to get excited. Yeah. <laughs> I had a little bit of time to get excited on this one, but I knew right. it was coming. Uh, honestly, what's helping is the confidence. Right. When that thing was at 45, 50, whatever, 50 yards coming, I was like, he's done. Uh -huh. I, I knew he was done because uh -huh. I had, I've just built the confidence over the years. Of, right. I've just, I practiced right. with my bow a lot and I've killed, I've started to kill some good bucks and I'm like, he's, mm -hmm. they're done. Yeah. yeah. Dude, if I, you get me inside 30 yards, I'm killing it. Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. And that yeah. helps. That honestly helps. I don't think that helps with the, I still get just as excited. Dude, there's, there's nothing better. Every buck that I've killed so far, including this one, like after just whoever I'm with, I'm like, this is this is as good as it oh, gets. Yeah. Like yeah. it's just you're on top of oh. the world. Uh -huh. You're like honestly, what I felt when I killed that one was more than anything was right. relief. Because the yeah. skill set of doing that with your bow, you have to have that skill to be able to shoot that, sure, hit the target of that. Where, like I said, we were talking about crossbow. I mean, you got a sight, you got a scope on it or whatever. I mean, where's the skill of? I mean, yeah, I guess he's still sure. shooting, but it's not it's opportunity. Like, I mean, that's that's yeah. what all of the states are going for is opportunity to try to keep people engaged with it. And it, it's a weird thing because when we talked about like growing up and I, I want Dwayne to kind of talk about his his side of it. But, you know, we like I just spent time in the woods over and over and over again. And like, that's what kept me. That's why I still love it. Dude, I, I will say this though. Yeah. And I want to, cause we harp on the crossbow thing a lot, but yeah, to, right. to get a buck within, I mean, even crossbow range yeah. is like not, not easy. No. Uh, it, the, right. the other side of the crossbow thing is the younger kids. They can't pull back. I well, and that's well, perfect. Yeah. Those guys are Great. totally fine. And that's what I'm yeah. saying. I would be for it. Well, my, my it, first bow that I was using, it was 55 pound pull. That's what it was. I, I could pull that thing staying on my head. But, but we have kids. I mean, they're eight and they're ten years old. Going out with their dad. And yeah, Harlan's kids. shooting a crossbow. So it's yeah. harder shooting a crossbow. Yeah. I I don't yeah. think. I there's mean, no, there's no argument there. The, yeah. Right. Right. I think that if there was an introduction to from crossbows, it was kids and seniors. I think are perfectly women. fine. Excuse me. And women. <laughs> you think so? They I'm, can not, use I'm not touching no, that can. one. <laughs> well, I mean, they can. What are yeah. you saying? I'm saying kids and seniors. I think we're good. Obviously, the injured or, or people well, can't to, use to a it. point. I mean, to a point. Yeah. See, I would say new hunters. Like, if there was hunters. a way to enforce, yeah. like, in your first two years, you could buy a crossbow tag. Basically, I'd be all right. for it. But right. after two right. years right. of using it, if you, frankly, if you didn't kill a buck with it, I'm sorry. Well, like, I would, yeah. I would extend that to say anybody who physically cannot. Uh, or doesn't have the, you know, is an I mean, a woman can shoot a compound bow. Why not? And I would, I would also, like you're saying, I would limit that to probably the first couple of years. Yeah. You know, it's like, hey, if you can't pull a, a you know, a killing weight bow, then yeah, you should be able to use I mean, kids are killing, I've seen plenty of kids killing with compounds at 45 pounds. Okay. Well, then there shouldn't be very many women that can't pull that. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think that's an issue at all. I, I was think probably stronger than my mom when I was 12, though. What's that? 
was no, probably stronger than my mom when you, I was 12. Your mom was a farm girl. <laughs> <laughs> she was yeah. throwing hay bales over her back. Yeah. She could take you down. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I had that um that Indian Timberland stalker was my first compound. That's the one you guys got yeah. me for Christmas. Yeah. You, you remember how hard that was? You ever tried to pull his bow when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. Remember how hard there that was? There was no let off. No, no. Uh, you pulled, you were holding. Oh, I did. Oh, what yeah. do you mean let off? I couldn't get it past here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're, I remember that old one. What it, was that that you had? It was it, a wheel bow as well. It was an Indian bow. It, was yeah. it an Indian? Yeah. yeah. That's what I had. Set yeah. to 65 pounds? Uh, probably 60 pounds. Yeah. yeah. I remember once I pulled that out, I was like, I was a man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. Because yeah. I think I started. It wasn't even a, a structured thing. I would just go down in the basement. Oh, yeah. I would try to pull it. Oh, yeah. I think I started with fingers before I went to a release, too. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah. were still fingered. Well, you were just on the verge, if I remember yet. Yeah, we started fingers. And Cobra. And the uh, felt pads. Yep. Yeah. And then, then you move over to the release. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 First That's time I shot a release, that was when... I forgot what bow I had. Shit, dude, you were killing deer with a wooden compound in like and 2010. <laughs> he's like, he's like, here, you got to try this. Here's a release. You still using a 10 yard pin last year. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> On his, so, on his way, bent him. So I set up the target, and I was like at about 20 yards, and I start shooting, and I'm like, oh, this release is nice, but it kept going left, and I'm thinking, what the heck's going on? And I kept trying, trying, and I'd move the sights, and it's just like, oh, this is really screwy. Well, then I come to realize, oh, well, I never hunted with a peep sight or a kisser button. I wasn't looking through the peep sight. I was just pulling back and shooting. Did you guys everything was did you have a peep left. sight in your bow early? No. Yeah, you did. Uh, no, not not an Indian. Indian did it didn't. I didn't either. I, no. You look through the strain. Yeah. 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 Which is a weird yeah. concept now. Maybe yeah. mine, because I had a bow at the same time no, that had the tube on it, remember? Yeah, you had the anchor and then you had your yeah. ready to pick at your nose. Right. Yeah. So Yeah, you didn't have a kisser button. Your finger was your kisser button. <laughs> that was your, that was it. Yeah. Well, you were you still shooting that Indian when I got the uh the PSE? Was that my first bow? That was your first bow. I was shooting a Bowtech at that point. You got the Bowtech at the same time, didn't yeah. you? Yep, same time. And that Bowtech was like leaps and you went from the Indian oh, yeah. to a Bowtech yeah. Guardian. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's it, a major it job. Was, uh, and it stuck with me for 20 you years. You shot that thing for 20 years? I think so. Did you wow. ever change string on it once? No, I have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I changed my string. Uh, how I many times? To. In 20 years? Every decade. Twice? Every decade. No, got, give me three times. <laughs> 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 I remember... I remember <laughs> I remember uh because did you go straight to the Bentham from that? Yeah. Oh wow. Did you guys yeah. you guys didn't go to J Peak, did you? I went with the Prime a couple of times. We've always gone to Tim. To Since Tim. I was twelve years yeah. old. That's yeah. when I got that bow. We've been going we to the started at J Peak yeah. and then, then well I we I used to go to Nelson's arrows. Nelson's I thought was listen, first. I thought yeah, about J Peak tonight when I was yeah. in that ladder shed. I said I remember one thing. It was a big game. It was a big game there. <laughs> No, he's still JP. doing that stuff. I know. Is it? Crazy? He's blind as a bat, though. He. Yeah. I remember when he was working on my bow. I was like, oh, I don't know about this. Yeah. Like they've yeah. advanced. Really nice. Does he guy. still have all the uh, bear mounts. All the bears. Yeah. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Huh? Oh. yeah crazy. Well, yeah, and uh, Dottie passed away, right? Up yeah. at Nelson's. Did she Arrows. really? Yeah. Up at Nelson's Arrows. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. I remember pulling in there one time. I was like, Ooh. that was the place, though. Too rough. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing him at AT, like one of the first ATA shows I was at. You know, and it's, you're in this big industry, and it's like, oh, there's Nelson Air. And, like, everybody knew Nelson's arrows. So it was like, this yeah. is weird. Well, JP, he, right. he two bows and stuff like that, but if you needed arrows and the yeah. other stuff, you had a good Nelson arrows. Nelson. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, it wasn't like you went down to local Kmart and bought some Easton double X 75s. I did know. buy some yeah. out of the Dick Sporting Goods bin several times. Yeah. That was when we were shooting speed I and not. Too. Not, yeah. not anything else. The Maximus, yeah. I yeah and even back then, yeah. you know, dozen arrows was you know, 30, 40 bucks for a dozen yeah. arrows. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know what they are now. They're oh, getting yeah. out of hand. I couldn't, yeah. Yeah, it's like 150, 150 bucks, for a, bucks dozen? for a dozen. For a dozen, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> not including your broadhead on the end. Yeah. yeah they're getting, oh, yeah. Shots are getting expensive. Lighted knock, mm -hmm. Alter Tesla's broadheads. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> amazing where it's come to. And I get it. Like, you know, that it's just as much the opportunity and the, the ease on that as it is everything else that we kind of talk about. But yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think this week, um, obviously the weather's definitely, you know, played against us. But the, you know, the fact that we didn't have any camp, like, we don't know, we had no idea if any shooters even existed. Mm hmm. Dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say based on the sign, like if we were here a different, like a better weather, we'd be we, in them. We'd be in them. Yeah. Based on just you know, Kevin's, you know, what, yeah, yeah. 
all indications are there's some good bucks out there. Yeah. 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 Um, Dwayne, you're up. How'd you get, uh, how'd you find hunting? So where'd it come from? Yeah. So my dad took me out is how I got introduced to it. And I think my first experience with Dale, with Dale, it was yeah. my older brother by mm-hmm. a couple of years. And of course there's always that competition when you have an older brother. Yeah. And I just remember going out my first time I had a 410 single shot, uh, it was my weapon of choice mm-hmm. and my stomach hurt like crazy opening day of buck. And, and I didn't want to tell my dad that I was hurting. I went out, I missed a buck. I think it was a six point running right at me through these, uh, a pine grove and completely missed it probably 10 yards running at me. And as soon as I missed, I bent over and I said, dad, I said, I think I have to go to the hospital. And I had an appendicitis. No, you I, didn't. I did on opening wow. day. And they're like, yeah, you should have been in there sooner because your appendix were about to burst. Whoa. So, and you didn't tell them because you were excited I to was, go, right? I was too excited. Yeah, because I've never seen pictures. Or, and this is like your first year. This is my first time to go hunting. Oh, were you like yeah. 12? 12? I was 12. I was not allowed to go. It's always been 12 in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Huh? yeah. I, wasn't, yeah. I wasn't able to go with my dad before then. Uh, but he would bring in... You know, I remember uh, Poppy bringing in a old uh, Volkswagen with a deer on the front of it. And it's like, when I get the deer on the front of it. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine it tied down on a Volkswagen? Bike? Who did Poppy? Who did Poppy used to hunt with? Oh, he'd go, he'd go by himself. You go up to uh, Richland. You have this Woolrich jacket. Oh, yeah. On, yeah, that's cool. up, yeah. But then um, growing up, uh, we started bow hunting pretty quickly right after uh, I was able to. So at 13, 14, we used to build our own tree stands out of press particle board. I don't know. If, yeah. I wouldn't recommend where, where that. Where did you guys get yeah. your first bows? Like who got those for you? I was Christmas gift. I mean, Bobby got those for us. And huh. we, got, we got identical bows. both uh, day From after. a quest? Like were you asking for them? Oh, yeah. We'd like to have bows. Based on what? Uh, Poppy had a recurve, and we knew that the season opened sooner, mm. and so we said, "Let's try to get into bow hunting so we can have a better shot." Huh. Well, I'll tell you real quick. Uh, Did Poppy ever kill a buck with his recurve? No, I don't think so. I've never seen Poppy kill a buck. Uh, really? Yeah, I don't have any pictures, or, and he'll tell me, "Oh, yeah, I remember there's times." Uh, <laughs> I definitely saw. Him. And uh, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> boy, I just don't remember that. And even Dale would say the same thing. Is, like you don't just don't remember, just don't, don't recall remember it. Dad ever bringing home a deer. But you know, fortunately, he introduced <laughs> us to the sport. So I'm not gonna. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm not gonna uh, bash on him at all. I'm so thankful for that. But I remember being up in a stand with a particle board that was a year old Mm. and I'm 14 years old. Dale, my brother just dropped me off at 16. Uh, I was in a stand and it was a great, that half hour, right when the hunting started to get good. This is Western PA? In Western PA. Northwestern PA. Meadville area. Meadville area. Up around Meadville. Crawford County. And uh, the woods are getting quiet and all of a sudden I hear this crack. And I'm flying through the air. This is when you still have your bow in your hand. And I yeah, th- no bow hangers, no harnesses. No, uh, no. No lifelines. I, no, yeah, none of that stuff. I, Just plywood. I, 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 yeah, well, and particle board. Yeah, and, not not good. And the second year on a particle board is not great. Not recommended. Reinforce that uh, stuff. So I don't know if you talked about my brother, but I just remember I, I threw my bow, I hit the ground, and I your face ble- bleeds like crazy right and i hit my face off the ground and i had blood running all the way down me and i go up to my brother at the truck and he's picking me up and he's like what happened to you and i'm like my tree stand broke <laughs> and you know what did you I, do you couldn't caught no cell anymore phone, right? no no there's no cell phone oh. yeah and so uh, I, 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 I throw my Just the meeting time no, I'm, yeah. i threw my bow away as i'm in the air like yeah. a cat but that, like, you know, you're, you're kind of flailing. Did it. you land on your paws? No, or no. I, I, no I, I, I land on my head, my yeah. face, actually. Yeah, apparently, <laughs> your nine lives are out. Says, you know, <laughs> I'm like a bumble. I bounce. <laughs> I truly do. But uh, I just remember the comment from my brother. He's he's like, he sees the blood, you know, and he sees I'm shook off. <laughs> what happened to you? No, he's like, did you hurt your bow? <laughs> <laughs> that was his first question. I'm like, he didn't care about me. All he cared yeah, about was my bow. Yeah. yeah. 
what happened? But, uh, what, were you, did you cut your face or? Oh, I just hit it off a, a limb or something. <laughs> just so, hit it off a limb? Yeah. Yeah. He's a particle board. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. But uh, I thought it'd be fun to talk about uh, why Jared is the way he is. <laughs> uh, at least, uh, what do you mean? I mean, uh, no, 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 just a, maybe a couple stories. Go for it. Yeah, 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 yeah like that. people like that. Uh, just uh, introducing Jared uh, to hunting uh, when he was very, uh, I think you were probably four or five. I took you out duck and goose hunting. And I think uh, one of the things I found when you introduce kids to hunting, if you have to have a lot of action really quick and then get them in and out. Yeah. Whether it's in a blind, spend a half hour with them, get them out, uh, especially at that age. And I remember taking you out duck and goose hunting. It was the first time I took you hunting. And then probably the second time was dove hunting when it was fast and furious. Mm -hmm. um, kind of one and the same, right? Like, would we duck and goose hunt in the morning and then just go dove hunting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we got involved. Uh, I introduced Jared to hunting through guns, mm -hmm. you know, through whether it was duck and goose or through uh, the pigeons or yeah, with, uh, the with the dove. Um, but I remember, th I thought you were going to tell the story about, um, <laughs> so when Jared first started archery hunting, he, uh, he told me he had hit this doe. And I said, well, where did you hit it? He says, well, I'm not sure, but I got blood. And so we, we went out and behind the house, uh, no, down the road and <laughs> down the road. I'm trying to think of where it is now. I, actually, it was behind the house. Okay. Uh, okay. Keeblers over on, uh, the other side, guys, head, Lawrence? uh, head the other way. Okay. Anyways. This deer was, was it trespass not supposed to be there or something? Uh, I mean, trespassing no, no, was, we, it wasn't no, a big deal. We weren't trespassing. I but, shot a doe. But you had shot this doe in the butt. Mm. And and it was Oh, oh, I was well in on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm with okay. you. This is, uh, this yeah. is like last year. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. So yeah. Yeah. Well, no, and I just remember going up and it's like, well, the animals hurt. I was probably like six. 15 or 16. You're probably maybe. 15. It was after my accident, so I was probably 15. Probably 15. Yep. Well, he uh, he was able to get on top of the doe, and there, you know, I thought he was going to do the Indian thing. Well, we were tracking, right? We, we were, were looking for blood, we and then I came upon the deer. You found the deer, and your instincts took over, which was jump on the deer, <laughs> and you put the doe's face down into a puddle <laughs> and drown the deer rather than kill. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like he, that's like the, the, the most humane way to kill a deer. Wow! Was like kick, kicking me in the back of the head. Go no, to sleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just I'm telling was, you. No, and listen, this, the creek wasn't deep enough either, so I had to dig it. Yeah, out. I yeah. held its head to the side. He's, he's over there digging it, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I'm speechless. Wow. I'm like, uh, I'm so proud of it. I hope but, all the kids are sleeping. Uh, no, I, I'm like, I can't believe this. This just happened. But it, I mean, so that was one of my experiences. But. Well, that that I had I had wow. some trapping under my belt at that point, so I yeah I was gonna say I that sounds to like a, 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 a coon or a muskrat drown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got trapping stories with the uh, we we had uh, traps set up down at his grandmother's. And, <laughs> and we were looking for muskrats uh, and um and mink mm -hmm. and then just little foothold uh, sets, and we had caught a blue heron in this <laughs> trap. Oh. And if you ever get really close to blue heron in a trap yeah they mean it sounds like a pterodactyl mm -hmm. like, <laughs> You're like a six foot wingspan they're huge oh man and just Big, try, long beaks just to try to let that thing out um and we got a stick we put it on its neck and we were able to release it um okay mm -hmm. other data points for jared um, <laughs> i have told the ghost story on here just to uh, yeah, the know. goat story was, it, it's pretty epic. It's a big hit. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big hit for everybody. Okay. I mean, the odds of that boomerang arrow is pretty unbelievable. No, it, I still, every first opening day, I sent him a text. Goat is not in season. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the text I send him. No, it's goat's not. Enough. When I shot the goat? Yeah. No, it said, come home, arrow and goat. No, no, no. I'm saying... From then on, oh yeah, every <laughs> opening day now you get a text saying goat is not in yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, 
yeah. just to remind them because I mean that was oh. horrible. Uh, I don't think I did that. anything like that, right? Mm, try to think. <laughs> no, you never shot any goats. Never no. shot a goat. Hey, you shot, hey. a, you shot a deer and ended up in somebody's garage, and you had a go- <laughs> garage door was open, and the deer went in the garage and died in the middle of the garage oh, door. No. So he had to go up, knock on the door, and say, "Can I get my deer out of your garage?" The lady was pretty freaked out. Uh, She's like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "It died in your garage." <laughs> Like wow. inside of the garage. Uh, Jared is always about food too, and so he asked M- Vicky, my wife, you know, is there any bacon in the house? And she says, yeah. And then she didn't think anything of it until about ten minutes later, he, she hears shooting, and about ten minutes later, she gunshots sm- in the yard. Yeah, and she smells something, and here's Jared had made dove breasts. I shut these doves off shut, my mom's shut, bird feeder. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and uh, I come up from work and she's telling me what had happened and I'm like, well, you know, did he tell you what he was gonna do? And he's like, no, he like, shot him with mm. the Benelli Super Black Eagle. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. I shot I shot plenty of birds with the BB gun out of Graham's bird Wa- feeder. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's yeah. actually how I started bow hunting. I think I used to walk around the yard and like shoot bird, shoot birds. I shot my, a rabbit. It wasn't even a lethal with bow. my bow. Oh. I actually shot one of the, um, I shot my first, well, I shot that, that, uh, it was a button buck, the one that you saw fall in the field. Yeah. The second deer I killed with my bow, I shot on the ground mm-hmm. down below grams that I shot a doe right. like super yeah. early, Yeah. but I shot her off the ground. Uh, yeah. and it was like, Oh wow. That was insane. <laughs> Do you remember the first year I shot with my bow? I want to say it was a doe. Yeah, yeah, probably was. You know, I've never shot a buck with yeah. my gun. That's true. Really? Do you never. remember the first animal you shot with your bow? Uh, first animal? Or I remember the first deer. The, do you remember your first elk? Oh yeah. Was was that I was well, I was fifteen then, right? Yeah. So I'd kill I'd kill deer by then. Yeah. When did you guys start hunting Can Yeah, I shot an elk. When, when did I was you start 15? hunting Ohio in twenty twelve? No, you started hunting uh, before that. You've uh, owned it since twenty. Whole life. I, I can remember. Do you remember? Here's what I remember. Just I don't know. Some of it's kind of coming back to me. Here. We used to hunt the Robinsons on permission. It was right. like a small whatever they had, thirty acres or something. We had two different spots. I shot. We remember we saw that buck. You remember we saw that buck driving. I would have been like twelve years old in the summer. Okay. Remember you passed Robinsons on your right. Yeah. And then down on the left, we saw that just a buck. Just remember, we saw a buck, and we're like, "Buck, a big buck, big <laughs> buck." Yep, yep. And then whether it was or it wasn't, we'll never know. I, yeah. I don't think trail cameras were a thing yet. No, right? Why not? And opening morning, I was walking into this orchard, and I'm like, all I hear everywhere is, yeah. Yeah. just deer blowing yeah. everywhere. I'm like, there's a lot of deer here. This must be a good spot. Yeah. Good I'm just spot. waltzing right through this orchard. There's deer blowing everywhere, and it was. Before first light, I mean, well, it was first light. It was yeah. like, uh, is you know, I, it, it's so weird that it happened in hindsight. It was just I've got into this tree, just walked right through all these deer, all these deer were blown everywhere, and I get in the tree and no harness for sure. I saw an old gorilla. Oh yeah, old yeah. gorilla oh, hanging yeah. on. We would hung like yep. a week, a couple weeks mm-hmm. before. And I remember, um, like first light, like right over my shoulder here. It just was getting light enough, and I see big, big rack on this, but he's just right under me right here in this orchard or whatever and i drew back and i shot the thing i i remember like uh not being able to see well like i remember you <laughs> like, know what i mean like pretty dark because yeah. i practiced with my bow yeah. i'm like yeah. okay peep sight pin i wasn't familiar at all with the idea of like well what like, if it's dark when or... it's dark yeah you can't really see even if you can see your because mm-hmm. that was the thing i was like i could see my pin if i look at oh yeah i remember this 12 year old looking because they weren't did you shoot fiber optics like i know my first pins were That's painted five, yeah they were yeah, like yeah, yeah, remember yeah. painted like no, red white blue i'm not or that something. old come on <laughs> what are you talking about this is 10 years apart uh, exactly yeah. Yeah. fiber optics. We, we got technology you know what i'm things. talking about like do, the little like I, dotted I, end I yeah. fiber optics yeah Jeez, and i can so I can, and- so I can see the pen i'm not what i'm poor yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it the great depression <laughs> so i could see my pen and i was like so i must be good to shoot and then i drew back and then i was like befuddled by the fact that i couldn't see as well like you know uh-huh. how all that sight picture has to come together and 
but I thought that I could, I guess, well enough. And I shot and I just no experience at all. It was my very first day bow hunting, I think. And don't know where I hit that thing, probably super high or super low. And we just had, I mean, drops of blood that deer, in hindsight, that deer definitely lived. It, it wasn't a lethal hit. I yeah, don't, I don't you think. hit it somewhere. I don't think. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember hitting, um, trying to think with my bow. I mean, the first buck I killed with my bow was when I was at Penn State. Yeah. Remember, I shot it off the ground because I broke my arm at the yeah. Ohio State you game. Cast on, or you still have the cast on? You had to take it Half off. of it. Half of it. Yeah. So I was in a full arm cast, so my archery season was shot, and they took it off. And the day after they took it off, I went and shot this buck off the ground. Yeah, but it was on the other side of the fence where there was 35 <laughs> doe in heat okay. on the other side. Just minor details. <laughs> <laughs> so every every buck in the vicinity came down to the deer pens like, hey, let me in there. <laughs> well, well you'd asked about uh, when we started hunting the farm, and yeah. I, I kind of got sidetracked there. I was trying to get yeah. to the story where we – remember me drawing on those bucks over by the railroad tracks, and I drew too early? Oh, yeah. You talk about like trying a, to hold a, a pivotal yeah. learning moment. Uh, no, he saw me. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was. I don't know how long I'd been. I hadn't killed anything yet. I don't think with my bow. I was. I was still probably twelve. So it was like, you know, maybe later that first season, we went out there and sat on the ground. You're we like, well, let's just go sit on this like fence row or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we're, somehow there's these two bucks that came. We we're like, behind a log in the morning. Yeah, we're just hiding like it a, up on a like a ground blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sitting on the ground and. I remember these two bucks come in. I remember being my just my heart would beat out of my chest. I was like, "We're gonna kill, we're gonna kill one." Yeah, that was that was wild. And then I remember I was so excited. I wasn't even. I tried to shoot the smaller one. You remember? I do. It was just whichever one gave me a shot first, and it was like a a six point, and it was like a year and a half old six point, and a year I don't know maybe they were two year olds or something. And uh, I remember it it turned and walked broadside from me. I was like, "Holy crap!" Like it's broadside. And as soon as it was broadside, I drew on the thing mm -hmm. and it saw me. It just looked right at me and then ran. Ran. Oh, yeah. And I was like, it's, mm. it's funny because now it's like such a simple. Well, those are the pivotal learning moments. It was, I remember that being a pit, like a pivotal. I was like, right, okay. Right. Like you got to let them kind of get past you a little bit. Mine was, I killed, um, I didn't kill my, I mean, we hunted a lot. I didn't kill my first buck till I think I was 16. I killed that spike yeah, up at camp. Up at camp. And mm -hmm. I remember, so I killed that spike. Then I, that, that spot that I had up there for rifle season was just, it was freaking money. Like oh, just when was. pressure put on, it was it one was. of those places that the deer went at the top of this mountain. So the next year, so I killed spike. Now I, I like, you know, I broke the curse. I, I killed a buck. Um, the next year it was like, it was, I remember it just being super windy and I'm, it was a built like two by four and, right. and yeah. plywood stand yeah. two by four plywood. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. And so I just remember, I just like just dramatically recall like how windy it was. I couldn't hear anything. And this like entire herd of deer come like underneath me in these <clears> grapevines. <throat> and I remember seeing, um, cause I think at that point, the, the year I killed the spike, there were no antler restrictions. Right. That was the first right. year of antler, antler restrictions. restrictions. Yeah. And so, like, it was like, oh, shit, I got to count points. And I remember seeing this, like, it was probably, in retrospect, like a one-year-old seven point. And I remember seeing them and just, boom, and, you know, dropped them. And I'm like, yes, this was awesome. And, like, ten seconds later, this eight point that was, like, a, <laughs> at, for, okay. at that time, yeah. Yeah, like a three-year-old yeah. stud, five yards underneath, had no idea. He's just looking the other direction. And it was like, oh shit! Like that's why you wait. That's right. why you wait. Right. And that was and my. I used to like, say that all the time. I used to tell, you know, you could ask a lot of people. Oh, they sh first deer come through was a spike. They shot it. They're gotten it. And here comes this big buck walking through as they're got. Oh, wow. if you don't wait, that was my pivotal longer. moment yeah. of like, well, wait a minute, like, isn't yeah. it crazy that that's got? You remember when guys would just say, you know, can't shoot a big one if you shoot a small one. Like you got to wait. Right. That doesn't exist anymore. No. Right. At all, like that, even that thought. Well, be, why? Because of trail cameras, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. You target yeah. every deer. Every deer has a target label. Right. It's like, well, I'm not going to shoot this one because I'm going to wait for this one. Back we then, used to not know. You didn't know. We used to not know what was in the woods. I mean, that's how we are this week, right? It is. None of us know what we're like. I turned around and I saw a mega giant. I'm like, oh my god, that's yeah. a giant yeah. deer. Because <laughs> we didn't know any of these things even existed. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it that was that is the pivotal point. We've talked about that with the camera side. It's like 
every deer, not every deer, but most deer in America have a target on it of I'm not going to kill it or I'm going to kill it. Yeah. That's it. Well, like I said, in the early years when he was like 12, 13, I mean, Sunday night, Jackie Bushman, you know, Buckmasters. It was the only show that was on, really. It's him and Realtree. Yeah. And then, and of course, Bill Jordan and uh, David Blatton mm-hmm. and Michael Wandell. Plot you know, twist, David's David, coming on the podcast. Coming on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. What's that? David Bland's coming oh, on the podcast. I mean, so they started, you know, and they were big in the archery. I can remember, yeah. you know, they'd have competitions, the three of them shooting and stuff. And then, of course, Mossy Oak jumped into it, play, yep. and then Primos, and everything just started to go from there, you know, with everything. But we didn't think about I mean, yeah, we have uh, grunt call. I think we did have grunt calls. And yeah, we rattled, we, we had bags. I remember we had rattle bags. Yeah, we didn't yeah, carry we antlers bags. with us. No, we, well, we didn't bags. have any antlers big enough to run. <laughs> it was like spikes. <laughs> you draw the big ones in that way. But, yeah. uh, you know, it was just uh, how the industry started. It just kind of grew from there. And you, you remember just, when, so this is funny, not to interrupt you. So I would say it was probably in high school when Jeff and Ange and I did Western Pennsylvania outdoors. Oh, yeah. It was freaking hilarious. And yeah. I remember like vividly, it was probably a year. I don't know if it was my senior year of high school or something, but you actually were filming. Like you took a camera to self film yourself. Yeah. You remember filming that real big buck up yeah. At, yeah. at Penn Trafford. And it was like the next week I remember being, I sat and it was so weird because, you know, you talk about like hanging and hunting and stuff. Like all we had was like his permanent set and my permanent set. Right. I understand. It yeah. didn't matter what the wind was. That was it. it. Didn't matter. It, it didn't care. So when like I remember the one day you weren't, I don't know, you didn't hunt, and I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to dad's stand, right? Because like it was a change. <laughs> I'd sat yeah. that same stand for whatever ninety sits in a row. That's it. And so I remember sitting in that stand and I was watching up. We called it the Boy Scout Woods, right? And watching up at the Boy Scout Woods, and this like really nice eight point comes out. You know, and I'm bow hunting. I was like, oh my god, like that's awesome. And he just keeps looking down. And I remember, I, I think that I had a rattle bag and I was grunting at him. And he just keeps coming, like, what the hell? And I remember just like going like this. And it's just giant 12 point standing uh, by me. I'm like, what? Yeah. And by the time I turned around, like, you know, yeah. I was busted. I was, uh-huh. it was too late. But it was just like, like those, it's so hard to fathom. Like when we look at, onyx and we think about wind right. directions and approach and, and it was stuff. like no. dude i had a two by four stand that it didn't right. matter if the wind was a tornado i sat in it like yeah, it, that was that it was it like you said, the only you way had you had. Stand, until they started having the climbers when they started having the climbers we go but that was always a killer here you are in the pitch dark clunk, 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 <laughs> trying to climb up a tree with these climbers and of course once you got up there and got set in it was okay i'm up in the stand now but then you got to come back down and, see we never did that we never went through a climber oh yeah yeah, yeah. oh and, we must have had i don't know how and i'm grateful climbers. for that because now looking back on them those things yeah. were trash they were they yeah. were oh yeah, yeah. Dude, I had a, I, that's true the yeah. the only time i mean i've killed i killed several deer out of my summit climber but I remember it was when we got the cemetery property. So right. I was probably still in high school. Yeah. I remember going down into an apple orchard. I found this like little, like old, like crab apple orchard. It was probably first week or second week of the season. Pump up in this tree. And again, I'd like, I didn't, I didn't pay attention to the wind or anything. I no. had no idea. No. All I knew is hey, there was apples there. I remember pumping them in this tree and I'm sitting there and it's like 20 minutes after daylight. And I could hear something behind me. I, was like, what the hell? I turn around and it's the biggest buck I'd seen in Pennsylvania, like ever. Mm. Like just probably in retrospect, 40s to 50s. Yeah. But I mean, just a stud just sitting there with like an apple in his mouth. Chomping away. Chomp yeah. And I, rem- I was like, oh my God. You know, but my tree stands like the complete opposite direction. There's yeah. no pivoting in a, in a climber. And I remember him, uh, he eventually, he busted me probably because my wind was going right to him. And he ran up and he stopped at like 25 yards. And I remember vividly, this was like a major learning point in my life. Vividly, I'm in full draw on him and he turns and I have it like right on his throat. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, not a good shot. Not a good shot. And I, right. I, I didn't shoot. In retrospect today, I probably would have shot him. But <laughs> I was just saying back then, I was not comfortable with my archery setup. To, but he just turned back and I remember having it like right on his white patch. And I'm like, oh my God. And I, I never saw that deer again. Yeah. You know, cause we didn't have cameras. We didn't scout. Uh, like I'm sure yeah. he was there, but like, I never saw that deer again in person. It was just yeah. scouting. We did to walk him back in or sitting back there and just see what was there. You know, look for rubs on trees, scrapes. That was it. 
I mean, you you know. just, I couldn't tell you if I ever like really process. We talk about this a lot of like when you see a deer and you're like, it's that deer mm-hmm. because of cameras and mm-hmm. how we operate now. Like mm-hmm. back then, if I saw a buck, let's say I, like that buck, mm-hmm. I didn't get a shot at him. I don't know if I'd ever even recognize him again. Like my, the brain process of trying to identify unique bucks just wasn't, wasn't there. Well, and it was always the thing too, that, you know, the moon phase people had back then talked about it that, Oh, well, you know, those go into estrus when the days start getting shorter um, or the weather turned cold. And now they're going to, yeah. I mean, I don't know. There, there's so many, all the environmental factors, guys, <laughs> the rut predictions were a big thing. There's so many yeah. things on it, but like I always told him, hey, common sense will get you a long way in life. And to me, I just feel that a doe goes into estrus around the same time every year. It's just the way her body works. Yeah. So it's not like, well, the days are shorter. She's going to go into estrus or the mood's full. Of the, no, I honestly believe it's the same day every year. It's the same. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I'll bet it is too. Pretty close. Jeremy, I know yeah. you're running away there. Do, do they track does from year to year? Like specific does, do they come into heat the exact same day every year? Within 48 hours. hours. There you go. So yeah. You're trying to target a week. Yeah. You yeah. It, well, lockdown. And so what we're basing the rut off is buck activity. Exactly. And what's really happening is those does come into heat the, within 48 hours of the same so day ten, every yeah. single year. So you would think every year, you, well, if I saw, you know, chasing going on here or there, that would know, be the same area. Yeah. Well, and, and it is dependent, I think, you know, in terms of daylight activity, what we right. see, those yeah. environmental factors do have a probably some of Effect, yeah. I mean, it's just a learning thing. I mean, things archery see archery for whitetail has come such a long way. I mean, you know, I think it just there's you. just so much out there and yeah. so much knowledge, so much information. I mean, it's just you know, but I think like with you guys being in the woods as much as you are, seeing deer, whatever that you learn by just watching all this and seeing all this and doing what you're doing. Did Jeremy? Did you ever get involved with trapping? Little. Yeah, very yeah. little. Yeah, I mean, so I think that was ju- a little bit. That was um, Jerry. Ju- you gonna drink that beer or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was. Uh, you need a nipple for that beer? Yeah, <laughs> making us look better over here. We're gonna, <laughs> you guys are gonna oh, kind of army over there. Stand. Yeah, so, <laughs> we're moving our ponds here. Let's Check out my eight point. <laughs> <laughs> you got an eight point going there. Fit them all inside that's the rack. That's past my bedtime. There. I'm doing too many of these, anyways. That's right. Yeah. But I was gonna say, that- I'm hunting that ladder stand tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, with Jared, uh, your uh, trapping experiences, right, uh, yeah. made you a better woodsman. Oh, absolutely! Oh, I bet it did. To be able to read that, was, that was that was uh, my intro to the outdoors. I think yeah. was trapping. It was. I'm trying to remember. I mean, I think it was a combination of, uh, and I've said it on the pad- podcast before, but like Dale, Dale taking me spotlight, and we did a lot of spotlighting too. For some reason, I think even before we started spotlighting, Dale took me out away from some dinners up at mimi's house or something yeah, and that was yeah. like dude my, that was the thing that was my initial i was like spotlighting in an awesome. evening like going oh, yeah. to grams oh, yeah. and being like we it saw was some like giants. eight o'clock and we're like yeah. hey anybody want to go spot and we're like yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. well yeah. what was yeah. cool for me was because i was like you know the the family you know the dinners the family what mm-hmm. I, I was it was great but i was like let's get out, let's get out of here you know and so for my uncle to be like you and we, we all get are out in agreement like nobody does that anymore because you have trail cameras Right. right, like yeah. your cameras are. Or in Ohio, you can't. Right. Well, yeah, you're not allowed. Yeah, it's illegal right. in a lot. But in Pennsylvania, states, like it, it used to. Be, I mean, how many guys that you would see like the spotlights out ahead oh, of you, yeah. like guys yeah. fighting the same film? Thanksgiving after you know oh, all that. Everybody's I remember that. You remember jumped? spotlighting etiquette? Like yeah. uh, you don't shine the houses in between the houses. Dude, houses. I had a great. You see somebody else coming, you're just like you both. You shut them off. Like, in it. between the houses, I'd be like, off, off, yeah, off, off, off. Yeah, you take it every once in a while. You catch a bedroom. You're like, you're taking their security lights out, shutting them off. <laughs> it's like here, use mine. It's a five million candle watt pot. You know? yeah, there you yeah, that thing would be burning my hand by the end of the like, I, used like, to be a, I used to be a pro at like over the over the roof. You know? Oh, I was straight. I was straight in the bed of the trucks. So. Oh yeah, we we before I was hanging. You were in the bed. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I was usually driving, and and I was spotting. Oh, and I was wow. awesome. Did you wow. have the? I was like, did you have the the landing gear of a a plane in a pan for your first spotlight? Do you remember what your first spotlight was? Just the regular Q beam in the 
Yeah. Oh, so we hit old school. It was uh, literally yeah. a landing gear off of an airplane in a, in a frying pan. What? It was our first spotlight. Wow. Holy yeah. cow. So that's, that's impressive. What do you mean yeah. a landing gear of a plane? So, you know, they have landing lights. Yeah. That's the light bulb that we use inside of a, Where'd you get it? Of a saucepan. That plane racked. <laughs> I don't know. Bob, Bob used to be a pilot, and so he had access. Oh, yeah, there you go. He had oh. access to oh, wow. uh, those. Wow. Those Did bulbs. he really? Yeah. I didn't know that. It's probably still somewhere in the house. Hmm. That made me and Poppy's. Yeah. Hmm. Well, but to the trapping thing, uh, you always you had that big bundle of muskrat traps hanging, mm -hmm. and so you know, yeah, I was intrigued. But Dale took me spotlight, and so that was that was cool. You had the muskrat traps hanging i was intrigued by that i was like do you remember what what was my what was my question around that did i ask if i could use them or i was like what are these how do you oh you see we started at uh, grandma's trapping muskrats i think is where we started you i don't think so i think the i could be wrong but i think the first traps i ever set were behind the house i because i what raccoons I, uh, yeah, for I don't know, yeah. know what. whatever you catch. Yeah, because yeah. what, catch I, all what, I, what I remember was you had the traps. I was like, can I use these? You're like, yeah, how about it? I was like, I'll go set some. And I went and set some traps and like I didn't know about a rule book or any. I probably had a license or something. But you remember I told you where I set them and it was like on open ground. I just basically took a, some sticks and veed them. Yeah. And we went out and like immediately I'd caught like a bird. And it's like, oh yeah, that's why the rules say, yeah, don't know visible sight from from the sky or whatever. So you showed me how to set some raccoon water, traps, water sets, and dirt hole sets. We set some and dirt holes, okay. uh, fox sets as well. Okay, you remember? I remember because I remember the fox sets were like those were my premium. I had like a half dozen of them. I was like, those are those are the better sets. And then yeah. you know the raccoon traps were like whatever. I caught yeah. I caught some raccoons and stuff yeah. and some possums and stuff, but. We had uh, chickens growing up for the kids growing up, two dozen chickens. And we had a problem with the foxes getting in there and killing the, sh the chickens. Mm -hmm. And so I used to pride myself with being pretty good at trapping foxes. And so I put a bunch of fox sets out, fox, uh, j just dirt hole sets. And I come home from work one day and it's raining and there's two chickens out in the yard. And I'm like, what the world is happening? And because they should be back in the roost. Well, I'd caught the chickens in the fox trap. Oh, so, so I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> you got to yeah. catch the fox. Remember, I, I caught a fox in the yard, a gray fox, right in the middle of the yard. I do remember that. Yep. Remember, mom was mm -hmm. like, there's something yipping out in the yard. <laughs> it's like, well, there's a gray fox in the middle of the yard. Uh, yeah. Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> what are you going to talk about? What do you think? Well, let's before we answer questions from these guys, because I asked them what they want to hear too. Um, let's talk about so we got here on well, you got here Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. uh, got here Saturday late morning. We made great time. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got here, we got here Saturday morning as well. We didn't hunt till the afternoon in the morning. So the original plan, just like always, is a start hunting Saturday. Well, so, can we talk about this buck real quick? Can we do that? I'm gonna lead into it okay. first. All right, all right. Let me tee you up. Uh, right, tee you up. <laughs> um, so we're we knew, normally hunt till Friday morning, and then we go home. That's that's the strategy. Come in Saturday, hunt till Friday, come home. Uh, at one point, the weather was looking amazing. Then it went south really fast. It's just been warm. Tomorrow, south of the border. Tomorrow oh. is like seventy five degrees for a high. Oh Jesus! So it's been um, hot. beach weather. And again, un unplanned, right? We. Uh, we obviously own a farm in Illinois now and Friday is the opening day of the first gun season. And so we said, well, because, uh, the way that the weather's going on Wednesday and Thursday, let's hunt Wednesday and Thursday morning by noon. What if we left here and drove to Illinois, got the dad's licenses for gun season, stayed at our buddy Paul's place and then Friday morning hunt, not only to make a presence of like, we're here, you can't trespass, but we have like three or four like mature eights that we want to kill still. Yeah. Um, and just why not hunt there for gun season? So we've brought what you brought a 20 gauge. I have a 12 gauge, 12 gauge. We've got a 20 gauge slug gun. 
This 12 gauge he brought is the reason I quit slug. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it, it's, it's, it's wicked. It's like oh, if oh. I punch you in the shoulder as hard as I could, yeah. that's about what yeah. I, yeah. no, no joke. I love that. Yeah. It's no joke. Yeah. So we've got, we're going to set the dads up with slug guns on opening day gun season in attempts to kill G4 and crazy horse. Those are the two that we know are there. And flop who we haven't and seen flop in a while. And sticker, sticker two. So there's like five. Of yeah. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyways, that's what we're going to do, but I'll let you lead that into. Yeah. So in the meantime, here, I'll hold them up so we can get a better look at this sucker. (laughs) There we go. There he is. Yeah. Boom. Looks like a giant on the camera. (laughs) Hold it way up to it. Yeah. He's super wide. Yeah. Yeah. He is though. What what (laughs) was he? 20 over 20 inside. Yeah. He's 20 and seven eighths inside. I think. He's a deer that we hadn't had a ton of camera history with. He just showed up in, what, the last two weeks, probably? No, he's been around, but just not as much as some others, I think. Yeah. So, well, you shot yours uh, the week before last. So, yeah, we came October out for 30th. our first trip, October 30th, had that big cold front. First sit on the new farm. It's my rat- style. Rattled in a, you know, mature mature eight who had who had daylighted earlier in october and then we'd seen a couple other which times. you know based on just our just the you know uh you could call it brief the trail cam like uh mm-hmm. you know information that we have here we're like hey there's a lot of bucks that are you know they seem to be five or older mm-hmm. we don't have any history with them obviously but they they seem we, we had identified you know we're, we're trying to ID some of these bucks. Hey, you know, here's your two-year-old. We have a really good two-year-old 10, three-year-old 10. We have a great four-year-old. Weird that there's like one three-year-old, you know? Yeah. Kind of interesting. I just wonder if it's because of these guys pushing them Maybe. out. One or two four-year-olds, and then we have like four or five, five or older, you yeah. know, is what we're thinking. And this is what I thought that I thought this is one of them. Mm-hmm. I found it afterwards, you know, we, we hadn't quite discussed it. Well, but. I don't think it was that we didn't discuss it. We miscommunicated on yeah, it yeah. because we were focusing on the deer I shot it just wasn't as common, Flop. you know. It's just like, yeah, he wasn't as common, nor was in Crazy Horse had kind of showed up like yeah. all over. And we're place. like, oh, yeah. In fact, I'll let you talk, but I thought you were going to kill, yeah, that yeah, deer yeah. instead. So the first trip, you know, um, you know, you you killed that buck, and it was like kind kind of slow to start for me. We just didn't see a whole lot of rutting activity, and, and that trip wrapped up. We came home. I hunted the farm for whatever three three four days mm-hmm. and then we, we had some days there in between some some running activity at home i had some good encounters and stuff but uh ultimately i was looking forward to getting back here uh to illinois because mm-hmm. while we were there for the first trip i was already scheming for just like i am here like I'm the pro- weather kind of probably coming south. back to kansas yeah i'm all i'm already scheming for the next one i'm like i gotta come back well, that's what i way. told him when we were yeah. driving i was like <laughs> you still had like two or three hunts left the week i killed and i was like yeah jared this is already coming back What's this for Illinois? Yeah. Oh yeah. It was uh, like we we had just finished up like I'll our li- it, our first live podcast, and you're like, I'm coming back. I'm like, dude, you have two more days to hunt. Like, what I'll do. do I, was, I I enjoy the challenge of like, you know, what it's like. What will you do for for a big buck? And it's like, dude, coming from Anything. coming from yeah. Pennsylvania, like other than the states that are northeast of us, like there aren't much further places in terms of getting to the Midwest. Yeah. And as much as that sucks, it's like part of it is like, dude, what an adventure to get in the truck and drive 16 hours to Kansas and like, <sighs> you know, run around and try to get it and to kill it, you know, to come to Illinois and shoot a buck like this, you know, coming from Pennsylvania and stuff is like, that's, yeah, that's what we're doing. Yeah, you know, that's right. what we're doing. Um, so anyways, I came back for the second trip and I had two days, I, you know, uh, I was looking even as early as our first trip, I was looking out at the, the weather and saying, it's, we got a big cold front coming through later in a week. I was like, I, that's that's what we need to hit, you know? And so, um, whatever it was last Tuesday, Wednesday, I packed up and drove out, uh, what day did it come out? Thursday, Wednesday. Mm-mm. You came out, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday. At, we filmed the, we filmed the Yoder podcast that dropped earlier today. The, the days, days of the week mean nothing to yeah. me I, during deer season. We I'm filmed, just like, <clears throat> we filmed the Monday, Yoder. Sure. We had your dog, so yeah, it was Tuesday. Yeah, well, we filmed. Hey, and thank you guys. Yeah, yeah. I had to, so I had to coordinate some your stuff. Kids, I was like, listen, yeah. I'm gonna drop the dogs. We're gonna drop my kids off. I'm gonna drop the dogs with mom and dad. I'm like, wife, good, you good? Like, are we, can I do? That? <laughs> and she's like, I'm flying somewhere. She's in Tennessee right now. Have right? fun. Yeah, hanging with friends. So peace. I was like, okay, I'll see you in <laughs> December. And uh, <laughs> and uh, so I drove back out in the morning. 
Uh, no, it was, it was we filmed Yoder's podcast Tuesday filmed Yoder's morning. Podcast, who dropped an hour ago. Yep, a couple and hours then ago. You, you blitzed right after that. I blitzed right after that. Got in later than I had hoped. It was like nine. Yep. To Paul's place. To which Paul's. Paul is a listener of the podcast that we're... Just a friend. Yeah, reach out. That you stayed. You stayed. Paul wasn't yeah. even there. He's, like, he's hey. coaching football games to go to state, basically. Yeah. He's like, hey, we've got a cabin there. He's like, my son and my dad will be there. And stuff. Well, like, like four miles from our place? Not even. Not even. Two or three. Yeah. Yep. And we're going to probably stay there on <laughs> yeah. Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Just awesome guys. They've got a nice, you know, couple hundred acre farm there. And uh, he's like, yeah, if you need a place to stay, I was like, which his son I was like, is like on that. It, just killing giants, slaying giants. Yeah, Cam, twenty-one year old son, killed a one eighty and a mid one seventies. Wow, Jeez. this year. Oh, oh, oh. Giant. Uh, the the one seventies was the day I left. He's mm. and he stocked that stocked on the ground, better with a doe right behind the house. Unreal. And uh, so, dude, just uh, an awesome family. Yeah, and I mean, just yeah, I just really enjoy our time with them. So I'm excited for you guys will meet them here in a couple mm. of days, hopefully. Cool. And. So I stayed with them, and that was, dude. I mean, both, both uh, live podcast number three both, yeah, at the both Illinois deer camp. deer camps that I've <laughs> killed from this year have been like just me and people I have never met before. North Dakota was, yeah. you know, that way, and uh, Illinois was that, which way have too. become long term friends now. Yeah, so making lots of friends this season. I mean, in in hindsight, it's been a really good, <laughs> you know, really good in that way. So, so rolling into camp that night, uh, hunted the f- first. No, I didn't hunt the first day. No. Honestly, so I had three days to hunt. The first one was not ideal weather. It was like seven hot. Uh, hot. Yeah, 70 still. Yep. This is gonna be and that night the front was rolling through into uh Yep, it was raining. So hot. Been Thursday. So Wednesday was hot, Thursday, mm-hmm. Friday. No. You hunted you hunted Thursday morning for the first time. Yeah, Thursday, Friday looked really good. So uh Wednesday, I just took that day. Honestly, I slept in mm-hmm. and we made eggs. I bust out the espresso maker, which comes to every deer camp with us. You know, treat, that'll that'll hit them off pretty well. Treated my hosts, yeah, with some espresso, and then I went midday and hung those two sets. I uh-huh. hung, I hung the beans pinch and I hung the pinch a pinch. Which, not to distract you, which one of the which of those are permanent stands? So I hung a muddy in the pinch a pinch where you killed from. That's a permanent, and I hung a lone wolf custom gear in the beans, which I was. I plan to pull and we'll talk about deer camp, but I would think that you guys could go to that muddy and throw your lone wolf on the side and you and dad could sit there. Oh, for sure. For open and day gun. You think, or you think North. I'm not sure. North or I do there. We'll discuss. We have yeah. time. Yeah. 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 Either one would be agreed. Yeah. Uh, so I hunted that first morning at pinch to pinch. Cause you'd killed there. It's just a classic rut funnel. We're like, they're coming through here. So it's funny, man. Cause I mean, uh, we, we didn't scout that trip down in there where I killed. Like I just walked down and just said, I need to see that and be able to shoot that. And there's only a couple tree options. Yeah. You end up using the same tree. You just went higher, right? A little bit. Yeah. So, I mean it, and it's the right spot. Yeah. It's, it's still, it's not like, it's not perfect. Like, well, you don't have great cover at all. Uh, the tree's great. It's fine. Wind's good. Access is the issue there. I think like it's, it's a noisy. Little, it's a little. You you go through too much stuff. Well, you're crossing through good stuff to get to good stuff. You I don't know, know how else you get there though. So I don't know. That'll evolve over the years. I'm sure. Yeah. But, um. Anyways, I sat there the first morning. I did see what, in hindsight, was probably a pushing sixties four year old. Uh, way split, off. Oh, that split you too, but yeah, way off. I didn't even know what it was. At the not time. on the list, dad. Yeah, not on the list. Not on the list, dads. <laughs> Hmm. And, uh, <laughs> okay we'll see hey listen that's a pow <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll be supervising over, yeah, over. Is it. We'll ask for yeah we turn we turn off the safeties <laughs> and uh so and that deer actually so you know speaking of monitoring cell cams and stuff ran up through the honey hole which is the spot that i ended up killing this buck midday he was there at like 11 and he trailed a doe through there and just based on how we'd seen bucks and stuff come through that spot we're like He's coming back through that in the evening, and he's that doe. They're going to bring something else with them, probably. So that was the decision. I I didn't hunt either of those two stands that I had hung that evening. Mm. So we went to a pre-hung muddy, and on the way in there, I mean, we love that. Uh, We hung that spot in July. That was the spot that Jared and I got back to our hotel room, and it probably like evening. I would say. I was like, dude, hey, I didn't want to say anything. I think I had a heart attack out there. 
It was like 115 <laughs> degrees. I mean, God. we were dying, and you said the same thing. We were we were hurting. It was bad. bad. Yeah, but we just knew the way that that like it just seemed like it was the hub. It the was honey the it, It's like a wide ditch. It's a weird opening, and in we the middle planted of a little clever plot mm-hmm. in the middle of it, and it's just yeah, they just come through there. Oh, it's perfect. And um, a honey hole. So I <laughs> just everything was you know it was good. The weather had dropped. We had that we had a cold front come through. On my way there, the farmers were picking the beans, and I was like. This is my opportunity to stop. So I, I stopped to talk to them for 20 minutes, half hour. Great people made a good, you know, contact. They don't them. listen to our podcast though, right? No. Well, the daughter's hot. <laughs> we called her hot farmer. We scouted yeah. her in July. Well, so we saw coincidentally. You just not every day you see like a good looking girl in a tractor. Like a giant John Deere tractor, like There's lifting hay bales. Good looking farmers. I married one. Well, yeah, but yeah. in the in the combine though. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It was kind she, of, it was out of was, place. She like, was in a giant John Deere tractor picking up hay bells. And we drove by and we're like, "Is that a hot farmer?" So, <laughs> so we call her hot farmer lady. Yeah, so we didn't. We, we no didn't idea. Know. We had yeah. no idea. And uh, coincidentally, yep, yeah, she turns out she's pretty good, pretty good looking. <laughs> and uh, and married as are we. <laughs> as are we. Yeah. And uh, so it was, yeah. it was her yeah. and her dad that were in the combine, and they were both just awesome. Pretty cool yeah. though that like to see the family yeah. aspect of it. Yeah, and obviously we wanted to make friends because we need other grains planted. Yep, and they were yeah. super open to working go. with us for you know letting food stand and stuff. And so, the, you know, that went well. So I was like, good vibes going into this. And I so I honestly, my they cut the beans though, right? They were cutting the beans, and I got in just as they were wrapping up cutting the beans. It's and, only eight acres, so it probably didn't take them long. And I was just up the valley from them, maybe uh, two, three hundred yards, mm-hmm. maybe. And so got in there. I felt like pretty good. And it's like, you're, you're in there. I mean, that's all of that. Illinois farm is cool because it's like, you don't have to walk through a lot to get to the really good stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just like through this little tree line and I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And the wind was perfect. Like immediately I was dropping milkweed on, and thermals were rising up the way that I needed to be. And as almost as soon as I got on a stand, I checked. I, I pulled up the cell cameras and, good. and I started scrolling. And I see Crazy Horse, one of these big shooters, three thirty on the ridge right above me. And oh. I'm like, I'm like, that's right now. And I'm like, I'm looking up there. I'm like, should I call at him? I'm like, I'm looking at it. I was like, oh, it's ten minutes ago. I guess I, you know. And before too long, I see I see a doe working up at the top of the ridge up here. And I'm just watching her and then sure enough, right behind her, there he is. You know, I just see him and they're working across this ridge here. And uh, I couldn't tell quite what happened. It seemed like the doe kind of cut around like this and he kept going almost like she wasn't ready. She right. wasn't hot. Yeah. He just checked yeah. her out and, and kept going. So I snort wheezed out. I'm just giving a. And oh, he, your snort wheeze. Do it again. That didn't sound good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I used my tube. That's what I said. I used the tube. Yeah. I used the I used the tube. And that we we knew that was a funnel, but we kind of figured we'd see most of the deer. So when he's on that ridge, it was like, man, how many deer are actually using this ditch that we're not getting on camera? Oh, sure. Yeah. A lot. So he never he just never I was like, well, he's you know, he moved on or whatever. And I was he might he could come back. It was super early. It was like three thirty. It was yeah, it was three thirty. Three thirty. And uh and he can't, that deer, I swear, is living in the house with our farmer. Like he lives right by the house. And yeah. that's just where he's coming from. And uh, so he worked off. And then 15, 20 minutes later, I had a really nice two year old. I mean, when I say really nice two year old, them deer in Illinois are big. At first, I was yeah. like, that's one of our shooters. You know? I was at 10 point. It wasn't. He had two year old yeah. 10 point. Come and walk right, right in front of me, 20 yards right down the valley. And then like an hour passed and it was like, it was just one of those nights. It was beautiful. Like I said, those thermals were rising and it was mm. just like high pressure night. And I was just gr- grateful to be there. You oh, know, yeah. and it was like, yeah. it was just beautiful. And I think it was about four 30. I started hearing some, you know, shenanigans up in the bedding area up above me, just like some ruckus, like some, something's getting chased around up there. And like maybe four forty-five, I see just it, it's getting louder, progressively like more uh, getting after it. And I see two, two or three bucks come like stumbling down the ridge right in front of. I mean, almost f- fall. Like all of a sudden, there's there they are. You know, and this buck's one of them. The two-year-old is one of them. And crazy horse, the buck that I saw initially, uh, you know, yeah, up right. front, 
I think was the third. And there may have been more. I don't know. Um, but just they're clearly, you know, getting after a doe that's up there. All three of them are just chasing her around. And, <laughs> and this buck, and immediately I, I knew who it was. I kind of identified him. And um, he dropped down just low enough to get a drink out of the creek right there. And he's panting, you know. And while he was down there, his head was out of sight a little bit. And I turned that doe can, which I don't do a whole lot, but I just felt, felt right. So I unzipped it and turned it. And he, he perked right up, flipped, flicked his tail and jumped right up on the bank on my side. Wow. Started <laughs> walking right, right in and just threw his head up in a branch real quick. And then here he comes. Just came right like this, like clockwork. Rounded the corner. And he's 40 yards. And that was the point where I was like, he's done. Yeah. I knew right there. I was like, he's, <laughs> he's toast. And he just, he did. He just kept coming in. And I ranged him two or three different times as you, because he kept stopping and he'd nibble yeah. on some clover that we planted. We had a little rye plot in there. And eventually he just came into 20 yards and I drew and I stopped him right before he hit a little section of branches. It's just, just loud enough that he stopped and just kind of, and I just crushed. I put crushed it right it. on that front shoulder, you know, and just, yeah, all I see was him bulldozing with no front legs oh, for like geez. 40, 50 yards and just pop, just crash, logs crash. We got some then, go cool pictures of him like coming in and then him leaving after being shot. Oh, yeah. On the yeah. cell camp. Dragging his front. Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, just bulldozing, you know, and I, call, I called Jeremy <clears throat> immediately. What did I say? What did I say? I said, there's only one reason I'd be calling you this. You said, oh, shit. I said, yeah, I said, oh, said, shit. And you're like, yeah, there's only reason I call you. Yeah. And it, you said, did you see him on camera? I said, no, that's a crazy horse. And you're like, no, that tall eight. And I was like, no, I didn't. You didn't know who I was talking about. I didn't either. know who you were talking yeah. about because that was the miscommunication. Yeah, yeah. And then once I realized, I'm like, dude, yeah, no doubt. Because we had him chasing a doe that morning, like right up at the fence gap. And it's weird because what know, I say, I was like, I crushed him, dude. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I knew it. I crushed him. He was drinking out of the creek. Once he started coming to me, he's like, I, I knew. And it's, you know, we've only we bought we closed on a farm in September. Like we, you know, it's just uh, it's weird because of the way it's so fragmented and sets up. Like it's as long as they're there, it's not hard to kill them. Like I wouldn't be surprised if one of the dads kills a buck on Friday morning. Yeah, moral of the story. Yeah, buy land. <laughs> yeah it, well it's just got to be there the right go. spot like even if you like, can afford it right? yeah but it's yeah. like if, if you, you can't save if you yeah. look at like if i think about like my ohio or or even kentucky like it's it's big timber like i can't pattern those deer worship like there's just big timber that they can just roam for thousands it's like here like i mean pattern a deer here it's not easy but out there as soon as the crops come down they lose thousands of acres of cover. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so they have to go where there's cover. They have to bed there. And so all of a sudden, as soon as that corn started coming down, I was like, oh, that's a new buck. That's a new buck. And it, I mean, the amount of daylight activity, I think, has been the biggest surprise factor for me for these mature deer in Illinois. Like uh, today, even it was like, or yesterday, it was like 70 degrees and Crazy Horse or G4 was like just running through it during daylight. And I'm like, what the hell? How do you name these deer crazy horse? We don't know. Yeah. <laughs> who comes up, who comes up with the I came up with crazy horse cuz it, it yeah. the first picture we got I'm like, "Oh my god, that is a horse of a deer." And okay. he had his it was cool. He had this real big non-typical main beam and then he had this like three kind of like weird brow like blade. Okay. He actually the when you were about to shoot him, it broke it off. He broke off that big Cause I texted him and I was like, I was like, dude, crazy horse. Broke I almost off didn't that. recognize it. When I first looked at him, I was like, that's weird. That's and a he's got a beautiful big five on one side. Okay. But he's just pedicle injury. And then G4, he's got these like little, like basically. He looks like, like a bumps. bodybuilder with a micro penis. Like his, his rack is so small, <laughs> but his body's so big, you know, he's such a stud, but his rack is so small. <laughs> yeah. He's like one twenty, maybe one twenty. Yeah. Oh. But he's probably. 270 280 yeah body Mon weight. monster <laughs> yeah and then there's so those are the two floppy has a broken ear so okay. pretty easy also like a 300 pound deer probably push him 140 yeah uh, and then there's a uh probably another 140 straight big eight but he's got like two flyer kickers off his two ooh. a really cool deer i'm gonna I say one third. i like the junk you think so i don't think he's as big. you don't think he's as big as floppy mm -mm. i thought he was bigger i think floppy's heavy and framey yeah yeah. So, you know, there's, and again, then us obviously killing two. Well, as for well. perspective, I mean, that's 137, just about, yep. you know. Yeah. And floppy's got better time length like, than mass than that deer. Yeah. 
Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's a cool cool place that we we got into. So, um, well, I thought to wrap up Kansas Deer Camp, we take questions yeah. or at least go through yeah, some. Yeah. Real quick, yeah. But we can do that. Yeah, yeah let's go. Yeah. We're gonna take a two minute pee break if you have to do it. Uh it doesn't let me go back unless I'm logged in. Okay. Hydration. Yeah. Okay. All right. You guys still hanging with us? 110 of you are. Okay. So, yeah, I can't see the, I don't know why. I can't see him on phone. You can do it online. I'll ring him. I can't scroll up the way. I can. Yeah. It was letting me. Jerry's checking his stocks over there. Is the market up or down? Actually, I don't see it. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start going through them. Apologize if you write late. All right. Um, Tony said uh, Jared's going to Tony like Spinelli. Me. Yeah, Tony Spinelli. Uh, looking at a flip farm, 40 acres. Surrounded, surrounded by big woods, 2,000 an acre, logged heavy three years ago, and as thick as snot. What's the question? You said you'll like it. Sure, we'll take it. 40 acres. <laughs> yeah. And it's hot. Uh, I think Philip the Wise, who's usually on this, Philip, I think he's talking about uh, Yoder's. So I'll be interested to hear the dad's opinion on this. But I think he's talking about Yoder's podcast. He's saying, um, do we think people are just really a bad shot? Because Yoder was saying that 40% of the deer that he gets called in for for a thermal drone recovery are actually dead. The other one, 60% are alive. Oh, my. Do you think it's that people are bad shot or that deer are just tough? I think it's things happen. I think it's just bow hunting. <clears throat> and and yeah, I think people take take questionable shots. Right. Yeah. I mean, do people practice as much as they should? I don't know. Here you go, Jeremy. Well, I mean, you got the factors of sticks in the way, you know, that yeah. that can happen. Yeah, a, a lot of things happen. Well, wind deflection. Right. The more you kill, I mean, the better you get at it. Like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, I wouldn't less and less as you time don't get that actual on. buck fever. But initially, like, I'm not proud to say, but as part of it, it's like I, I wouldn't do a lot. Did yeah. someone ask Yoder uh, how many repeat customers he has? No. Yeah. No, that's a good question. A, that's a good one. Yeah. The question is like, you know, or maybe somebody that oh uh, are, are every you, year. Yeah, every year you call this guy. And... I assume it's. Yeah, I assume it's a fair amount. Gosh. Hopefully they the, learn the cash the Yeah. Uh, uh, Jared, this is a question for you. Matt J asked, are you guys lobbying to get bait out of Ohio? 
we're not no and it's sounding like lobbying is maybe not the approach in ohio it sounds like the setup is that there's a commission oh what's it called jeremy the ohio wildlife council or something like that so it's it, it's the yeah, that's what it it's is. the commissioners for the ohio department of natural resources which okay. is called the wildlife council so and the guy's name is mike rex is the chairman of that board which seats eight members including him uh, he's actually coming on the podcast next Tuesday to to talk about it. Um, and so it sounds like it, it it's simply a proposal to, to those guys to vote on an issue like that. Uh, I know that he initially has told us that he's not in favor of banning it. Um, it you know, and he's got some some uh, valid arguments uh, as to why. But uh, I know there are some, you know, we know some people that are essentially organizing to to try to um, um, to fight for that. And so I think, my opinion is I would be in, I would be I don't know how you feel about it either, but like we I would be in support of of getting rid of that generally. Um, I just think that it's not doing anything good for the state long term. Um, ultimate, you know, just generally speaking, I am in favor of things that make deer harder to kill. I know that that's at odds with some other people's goals. You know, mainly farmers, right, uh, right. Uh, motorists, right? Like we don't want motor vehicle ac accidents everywhere, so. Uh, the deer herd needs to be managed, but I think there's better ways to kill deer and not necessarily target three to four year old age class bucks. Um, and, th and that means getting rid of baiting. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Some people are, or are organizing for that. We're going to have Mike on. He ultimately is uh, the chairman of the organization that holds the power to do that. So, um, we'll see. Are you going to ask him if there's a compromise? If it's not, just oh yeah, nobody. we're gonna we're gonna root it out with yeah, him. Yeah, just gonna sure. walk all the way across and say yeah. it's not in season. So it sounds like Mike's initial thing is he's like, hey, if we if we ban baiting, we're gonna lose a lot of hunters because people don't yeah. hunt without bait. Basically, right. is what he said, and that's true. And it's an enforcing issue too, right? You Definitely an enforcement issue. Issue, yeah. yeah, yeah. But so if they make it illegal, people are gonna quit hunting or say, I don't know how to quit. I don't know how to hunt without bait. Um, and that's a problem because we have less voters and less money coming into the state. We also have less ability to manage the herd, which is necessary. So those two things need to be addressed in order for Mike's concerns to be satisfied. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me find another one here. Oh, uh, apparently Dottie at Nelson Arrows is not dead. So... <laughs> Ah. Wow. Okay. Sorry about that one. <laughs> Sorry, Daddy. Retract yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Daddy. Didn't, didn't mean it. <laughs> yeah, we didn't mean it. Um. Okay. Uh. <laughs> uh. Nick wrote is planning a good plot for bait. Basically, asking is food plotting baiting. Escalma? No, different, Nick. I think the answer is you got to draw a line somewhere. So mm -hmm. is planting a food plot, planting an ag crop, you know, what, what's the difference? I, I mean, I, for me, I think it's something that can be just dropped on the spot and is immediately attractive to deer. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'm not saying that food plots are not attractive to deer because obviously they are. Right. But I think the barrier to entry is much higher and you have to draw the line somewhere. Yep. So you'd say like a bird feeder is baiting. I mean, essentially, yes. Yeah, I mean, so the intention needs to be questioned, I guess. Yeah, yeah so I mean, I, you're I don't putting know. food plots in to help the health of the deer herds. Well, you put them in. Hold to... the deer in that area. So, yeah, so they, they have food at the winter. Well, right. I think the big thing with food plots, and at least this is my, and you know, whatever. At the end of the day, I, I really want to go with whatever the residents say. But my my beef with the baiting is, Tomorrow, we can go to the co-op, grab a bag of corn, and I can go put it out at your spot right. and dump it out there. And guess what? That hunt, it is guaranteed there. If I try to do that with a food plot, doesn't exist. Yeah. Has well, so you said two conditions. things there. It's immediately attractive and it's guaranteed. Yep. And uh, food plots, neither of those things. Neither. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Neither. Um, uh, Zach Phillips wrote and said, would you guys... Uh, or, or have you ever come down to Oklahoma for whitetail? I think that is a super underrated state. I'd love state. to, but it's so far. Well, it's not that much. Dude, we're an hour from the border right this now. This is so yeah. far. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I mean, Oklahoma is one of those states that's, that's why really... That's bought a farm in Illinois. It's like we're driving through so nah, much good deer hunting to get yep. to good deer hunting. 
Um, but yes, if you're inviting, yeah, we'll go. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, all right. Here, I'm just sorry. I'm just reading through here. Uh, Jordan asked, "What were our first animals killed?" Oh, <laughs> oh, first, first kill. Mm, I don't wow, remember. it's probably trapping for you. Uh, it was probably before that. Mm-hmm. Probably a robin or something. Yeah, well, that's what mm. I was thinking. Our like a bird in the yard. You took, you took me squirrel hunting for youth. A squirrel. Remember yeah. when they had that early season? Yeah, with twenty twos. Did we shoot one? I think we did get a couple. I shot a sparrow oh. right in the eye, mm. and the BB ended up looking like the eye. Mm. Uh, I cried. Oh. I remember dropping a cardinal in Graham's a uh, bird bath no, one no. day. Oh yeah, Not like good. just, <laughs> just. <laughs> Just it was like one of those things where it was just like so pleasant feeding, and I hit it. Just like one day, him and his cousin were he was, I think he was staying overnight, (laughs) and they were out in the backyard, and their bats flying around, and they had a BB gun trying to shoot bats. You know how they fly? Uh, Yeah, I mean, what are the odds of that? So, my brother in law went out, and he's sitting out there in the yard where he goes, Let me see. He pumps it up, these bats are flying, boom, drop the bat. Wow. I was like, wow. So that's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. You, you say something about you smoke this deer or you whack this deer. Mm-hmm. You still, you feel something. Oh, yeah. Like remorse at the end. of. I mean, oh, it, it's yeah. all about the hunt and not necessarily the kill. Oh, sure. Uh, so yeah. I, I want to make sure that. Oh, when yeah. When we yeah. talk about whacking a deer. Well, it's, like, it's the moment of excitement. Like, I'll say, yeah, like, yeah, even right. that that buck that once he fell down, like, in Illinois, I was like, dude, I can't believe I smoked him. I'm not disrespecting the deer. Like, yeah. I just was surprised. Like, that right. hit was, like, so good. Yeah. No, that's interesting. It's a, uh, there definitely is. It's it's not remorse. It's, res- it's respect. I right. think it's also because it's just become very it's, common it's, language. Like, you watch the TV, TV yeah, yeah. guys and they're like, yeah. oh, I smoked that deer. Yeah. Sense of loss, like just loss too. It's like death, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not yeah. a bad thing. I mean, have you have uh, this is not a question. Uh, have you ever had a mercy shot a deer? Not the one you drowned. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I've, yeah, the, the drowning I've, deer. I've mercy a lot of different ways killed. <laughs> oh, them. Yeah. That's not a pleasant thing to no, have to do when the uh, bat bang at you and. No, it's not. not that's how you learn. You're like, hey, I want to make good shots. I want to make so ethical yeah. shots. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, when they're crawling away from your spine. Yeah, yeah you don't want get that. back here. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely not a. I mean, that's yeah. That's how you learn. I mean, that's how that's how you learn to make ethical shots. So right. right. Uh, Jonathan said Masio cunning the country was one of his favorites. That's when we were talking about. Uh, okay. they'd like oh. we'd just be like rocking chairs on the porch and they're like, this yeah. product kills deer. Yeah. And then yeah. just like tell you about the product. Yep. <laughs> that's good. Uh Rieger went stand pots on. Yeah. Rieger. Mm-hmm. It would be a good one. Give me a minute. Uh, yep. Uh Jordan also said trapping made everybody probably a better woodsman, uh, but smothering a doe made him a legend. <laughs> oh me yeah, yeah you. that drowning the dough <laughs> oh. I had, I had to do it. somebody had to do it oh. yeah, that was a good one wow okay yep. uh jonathan also asked about transitioning from tree stands to saddles which i don't think any of us are using uh, what's the question no uh, uh, like uh well, yeah, we've tried saddles. making the switch it's it's no, asked it's we, asked we, backwards right Oh, I don't recommend it. Yeah. I mean, it's everything backwards mm-hmm. and worse. <laughs> <laughs> Seems all right. There's no advantage to saddle hunting other than less, less bulk. Yeah. If you're going way back in, but oh, dude, I've been carrying that lone wolf custom gear a mile and a half back in in the dark. And it's, it's, oh, dude, I've got my, I posted on our Instagram story. Like I had my, my transport mobile pack, like, yeah, yeah. To a T. We have a pretty different setup, but they both work. Yeah. Just whatever makes you feel good. Uh, <laughs> really? I just want to whatever, 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 whatever you feel good. Uh, Nick's going to Kansas in nine days. He'll probably hit a cold front and kill a big deer. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, Central Mississippi Wildlife Conservation said night beers don't taste as good as day beers. 
Well, we've had those. Uh, we've had those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are we, are we out, out of beers, beers again? <laughs> are we out of beer? Yeah. We might be. Uh, oh, the, boy. Holy cow. How'd that happen? <laughs> How'd that happen? Yeah. Um, da, 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 I'm just reading through. Kansas. Uh, do you camp or stay with any friends or family anymore? Mm-hmm. I mean, this is. This I stayed is, with friends on two different hunts that I killed bucks on this year. And this is kind of our big. This is one of our dear. And this camp. is yeah, family here. We're staying at that Airbnb. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Which we did in Illinois yeah. as well. Yeah. So with yeah. the two of us, yeah. Yeah, I guess it's not as much as it used to be. What? In terms of like a camp atmosphere i mean did you guys ever go to like a deer camp no we have deer camp at the farm yeah we never have one so yeah so you have brian and willie and dale so that's kind of your deer camp is it and it but it's longer like i mean because they all bow hunt yep Mm -hmm. uh let's see here sorry i'm reading through Drowning in that dough. Oh boy. Yeah, that made you a legend. Yeah. Uh, talk to Alan. Uh, a lot of people are saying Western Kansas is a lot easier than where we're at. I've heard the opposite. It hurt us a lot harder mm-hmm. from everybody that I know that hunts out there. The deer are arguably as big or bigger, but it's just vast, vast prairie land. An ag land. Uh, Jonathan asked about spot and stock, probably because he heard me say I got out and tried to spot and stock that <clears> one today. I mean, I don't. I've killed several bucks off the ground. I killed that one down here the same right. year you yeah. killed off the ground. Yeah. Uh, like obviously, Western, we've killed in Western a, Kansas is a better place to spot. And stock. We killed in North Dakota spot and stock on muleys. Yeah, because uh, that's just how you kill them. Mm-hmm. But from a whitetail standpoint, I don't know. Yeah. Nick says Ohio needs to go to a lottery like Kansas. I mean, maybe, but there's way lower hanging fruit. You know what I mean? Start with baiting and see where that goes. Mm-hmm. I'm open to that. Uh, what's the best states with over-the-counter tags for non-residents? Illinois. Think so? Yeah. Better than Ohio? Or are you just trying to deviate the attention? <laughs> yeah. No. Illinois is better. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that's a tough one. In terms of over the counter, or it, it depends, what about, on, where, it depends so on where you have to go. Here's the, here's the two states that people have always asked us: Missouri, we ignore, yep. and Indiana, we ignore. Yeah, and both it's because there's gun seasons during the rut, and this their age classes suffer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean there are places in Missouri. Uh, and Indiana, they kill giants, but it's, I think it's private land for the most part, you know, managed private land. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I still brain. Uh, in our experience at this table, what is the best strategy to kill a mature buck? <laughs> I have an easy answer. All for that. day sit. Hmm. What is the best strategy to kill a buck? Mm-hmm. A mature, that's not what I was going to say, but that's not a bad answer. Yeah. A mature buck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, all, well, day, all day sit. Just do anything you can to be on properties where mature bucks are. I was just going to say, hunt where they're at. Yeah. That, that, Sounds yeah, stupid. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, if, if, not if, there, you're not if the get four them, of so. us were hunting a Pennsylvania game lands we could have the best strategy in the world and it's not going to do anything right. probably not going to be great but <laughs> if we're hunting hunt, hunt where they are yeah. hunt where they're at eventually you'll run into one yeah. yep uh let me see here sorry i hit a button <laughs> okay uh wisconsin joey wants to know when we're buying land in wisconsin we've actually talked about it so. yeah that's probably another overlooked one. Why does he have some for sale? <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> you got to give us a good price? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Ba-ba-ba-bum. Nick says, uh, here in Ohio, it stinks. If you ain't baiting, you'll be waiting. Yep. 
That's what it is anymore. Oh. Seems like it. Uh, okay. How would you guys approach trying to get rid of baiting in a state, for example, Texas, where it's been illegal for generations and don't see it going anywhere? I mean, same is true in Ohio. It just depends on the state, how the legislature is set up. Mm -hmm. So like in Ohio, it sounds like it's, there's a committee, you know, of eight people on board that basically fields those inquiries and, make, and makes, you know, makes decisions on them. I don't know in Texas. I mean, some states are required lobbyists, so you'd have to hire a lobbyist to lobby on behalf of hunters who want to get rid of baiting. And then, you know, the issue would be voted on. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, dude, I like Don Higgins has, it sounds like a pretty strong stance to say like in Illinois, you're not getting anything passed. Like he just basically says that the politics are so corrupt there that because he was on you know, boards or whatever that were trying to get stuff changed for a long time. And it, it just, they, they couldn't get anything done. Yeah. So, uh, two, two good questions here. Uh, Jonathan asked if we're using stick, what are we each using the hunt out of here in Kansas? That's my lone wolf custom gear exclusively. Besides the ladder stand. You I hunted out of a ladder yeah. stand. I found on public tonight. What are you hunting out of? I have a hang on with a stick. Mm -hmm. the, goes, the, muddy, the muddy, the muddy, muddy. that goes, inverted backwards as you climb up wow well, but the lifeline is in it's in so you're hunting out of that new novix the yeah, ladder yeah. that raider ladder which is awesome that thing was super light oh. i was surprised i mean oh. i took the thing down myself yeah wow. that's yeah. saying something yeah it's saying something <laughs> <laughs> uh and yeah i'm i'm the lone wolf as much as i possibly can i have be. two actually i've got one that i left hanging down here and one that i'm running with uh let's see here da, da, da. this is a question for the dads, so we can't answer um how have the dads adjusted to the new technology that they grew up hunting with without sorry so basically so, how have you adjusted with sure. as technology has become more advanced trail cameras cell cameras range onyx, finders <laughs> range finders. do you have a range finder yeah you do have one? Yeah, uh, we had range. I was going to ask you. I was like, does he have one or not? Yeah. yeah. We had the old school range finders too, right? Where you could look and there was like a, the scale that went sideways. Holy yeah. shit. And it was almost like for golf and they had them. Yeah, you, you could, could use them. It was good to about 40 yards. Yeah. But uh, it's been hard for me, uh, technology wise, uh, specifically with the cameras. Yeah. Because I, I've been in stands and I've seen the flash go off and when there's a buck in front of it. And we don't get that picture. And so I know there's it's a Spartan. <laughs> well, I know there's deer out there uh, that are impacted. And so I try to hunt areas of my farm that we don't put cameras. And that's contrary to how Jared hunts, where he won't go yeah. out unless he sees a deer uh, in a certain uh, property. So, in my opinion, honestly, I rely on you to tell me everything. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell me where I go. Oh, where do I go? So, Where's the deer? You, I mean, as far as getting into all the cameras and the onyx, and, and we're failing, yeah, all that stuff. But I mean, I could learn to do it, but it's easier just to say, <laughs> "Where do you want me to go? Yeah. Where do you want me set up?" Okay, sounds on good. Yeah. Onyx has changed. Yeah. I mean, because we used it in Colorado on an elk hunt. Uh, Jeremy gave me access to his track right to mm -hmm. the tree. And it sure made it a lot easier yeah. to find stands at night. Oh, yeah. With yeah. the technology. Well, we did that when we went up to Elgin National Forest. We went up to check my stand out when we got there, pitch dark. And he goes, Here, let me see. He pulls out and we're walking through. And I'm thinking, Where the hell are we going? And walk well, right to the stand. I was like, Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I rely on his technology. Let me know. I don't know. I, I'm losing a lot at, uh, what, uh, at poker. When I'm playing on my phone <laughs> while I'm up in my tree, so I think it's kind of funny because I I got my first camera when I was in Mississippi. That was probably 2007 or eight, something like that. Um, I had one of those big Moultrie D battery sucker type yeah. things. Um, but that was my first trail camera that I used, and it was film. Um, and then I had it eventually got a digital and everything like that, but. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's interesting to see how that. I think, I mean, 
trail cameras have made a huge difference, right? Oh, yeah. But I think cell cameras have broke that gate wide open, right? Even when people use trail cameras, you still, like in Pennsylvania, you went out and spotted deer. Because you didn't check your trail camera every day. No. You, you didn't know go, what was you happening. Yeah, go collect everything. Exactly. Right. So cell cameras are really what broke that. And then the other one right behind cell cameras is probably Onyx. I mean, the way that Onyx has changed your ability to navigate land is like yeah. unbelievable. Mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, I was it's pulling out cell a, cams on private land and Onyx on public. I was land. pulling out a port, you know, a, a three ring or a three fold, you know, map of like where do I hunt? Sure. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, it's not just Onyx, it's anything like that. But I think that's probably the the big ones that definitely you know made a big difference. Um uh okay, so that was the technology one. Okay. I didn't know we were getting tested on this today. Yeah, it's just a slight <laughs> test. I know. <laughs> Uh, goes past uh, bedtime? Yeah. <laughs> we'll wrap it up here soon. Yep. Uh oh. Is Jared thinking that he can get kill three mature bucks in a single year like Ben Rising Jr.? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's probably one more in me. I mean, you got here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you still got Ohio. I feel, like, I feel like I'm gonna come back here. You got here in Ohio, Ohio right? Me. I mean, those are your two big ones. I don't have anything in Ohio to hunt right now. No, but, but get yeah. out of here. I'll well certainly keep looking. I think you're probably got something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. But yeah, well, you know, since since they asked, this is my first year ever that I've killed more than one whitetail. Uh, but, yeah. but you know, yeah, yeah, I killed that one in North Dakota, and I killed this one here. Is I've that been, the first time ever? First, yeah, first year ever. A multiple box. Yep. Wow. I didn't know that. Yep. I don't think I've ever killed more than two. Coming for you. I know. So, I know. Yeah, I, I've got some time left here. I might kill plenty one. of time. I might kill one more. You killed one this year, right? One mm-hmm. so far. Yeah, you've got the Kentucky's looking good for you. Yeah, I finally got a good shooter down there. Uh, okay. After all that whining. I know. I was about to sell that damn place. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me see here. Uh, Alex asked, expandables or fixed blades? I think we're all using expandables at this table. Yeah. Yes. For the most, I mean, it depends on your setup. If Yeah. If you're shooting heavy enough arrow and enough poundage, it's expandable. Mm-hmm. But if not, probably fixed blade is you mm-hmm. need that for the penetration. Mm-hmm. So penetration over. I mean, we we were talking about who we were talking about with. You need it all. You need everything. You need. We need trauma. You need trauma to yeah to the organs. You need to cut the organs as much as possible. Yep. Uh, Wisconsin Joey wants to know if, if Uncle Ted's coming on for CWD and baiting. I know he's interest in it for sure. Probably after the season. Which surprisingly. And it, he didn't mention us by name. We were part of the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> but you said we were a part of it. I would say we're part of it. <laughs> yeah. He mentioned, he, he mentioned that. He saw a clip the that we yeah. promoted. That's pretty cool. Yeah. We were part of it. Um, <laughs> we're basically on it. We're basically on it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Nick said, isn't the Novix just a rebranded lone wolf? Uh, I, yes. The new Novix is the old lone wolf, but not the same as lone wolf custom gear, right? Correct. The Lone Wolf custom gears are built for like mobile hunters. I don't know exactly how that happened, but I think like on the Dequesto sold Lone Wolf to the guys that own Novix, right? But then there was something with the trademark. I don't know what happened there. So now the old Lone Wolf is Novix and Lone Wolf custom gear is mm-hmm. the Dequestos. And there is a stark difference between the old Lone Wolf and the current Lone Wolf. Eli asked if we killed the double drop time buck on our new farm. Do we have a double drop time buck anywhere? Nope. We don't, I have, know we don't have one. <laughs> you killed a double drop time, though. I killed a double drop time. We were on the yeah. streets of Penn State campus when you called Jared and said, I shot a double drop time buck. And we were like, right. Yeah, speaker phone. You're like, I shot a double drop time. Yeah. Right. When was the last time you saw one of those in the woods? Right? Never. Do we? Yeah. Uh, what do we say that deer's age was? <laughs> we think it's two or three. We think he's three. 
Get, that was the one that the dogs pushed to you, right? That's the ones the dogs chased out of the woods. Mm -hmm. And then the coyotes, I hit it back. And so I backed out. It was, it was a night shot. Mm -hmm. And it, next morning, everything up until the cape had been taken. Wow. So the coyotes took. It's an awesome looking deer. It's like a, true double drop tines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, you guys didn't know that deer. No. no. That's crazy. Uh, let's see here. Do the dads think it has had an impact on getting younger kids into hunting because of technology, positive or negative? I think it's been positive for the tech, tech, you know, technology, same thing with the onyx, mm -hmm. as far as being able to find out where the lines are. It gives the dads more co confidence when they go out into public, that they know where to go and it, to expose the kids to, to new areas. It also gives, if you need to know landowners, you can go out and, and click a certain area that you've seen a buck at. Uh, so you can go up and ask by name uh, the person on any property that you're at. So I think it's, it's been very positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I think the hardest part with getting any young kids out hunting or anything outdoors is just you're not going to take some young kid new out into the woods to archery hunt because you're going to sit there for hours and maybe never see nothing. And they're going to be like, why well, I ain't doing this? This is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's just baby steps into something, you know, little by little. We do a youth turkey hunt on our farm mm -hmm. and it's uh, kids 12 through 15 okay. and they bring their, their guardian and then we put them with a guide and you know there's a set time to go hunt in the morning and evening just for turkeys but before we take them turkey hunting we take them to the, the skeet range and so they shoot you know 50 to 60 different shots that's good uh, that's and then they get their shooting out of them knowing yeah. that they may not shoot a bird but that vocalization for a young kid mm. uh, with a bird coming at them and uh to, to see kids for the very first time shooting a turkey it's awesome yeah great way to introduce a kid to sport yeah well, you know and it's the same as your boys mm -hmm. you know you got carter and harlan i mean harlan you say you get up you ready to go hunting and he's standing at the door saying let's go yeah. you know carter he likes to hunt but he don't have that mm -hmm. drive like her and it's just it's just the way they are some do some don't and, yeah i mean you know. we've talked about it before i don't know you know i get on myself because it's like you know what did i mess up with one do right yeah. with the other it's ah. probably just an individual preference right. in terms of how that kind of sets itself up exactly um you know like i know that you know want the younger one likes to go out maybe it's because i made it a little harder for him because he wasn't out hunting all the time or maybe it's because he just wants to hunt more you know i don't Does he i like don't the know fish they yeah oh she, yeah. yeah they both like to fish so just get him in the outdoors and then eventually whether it's trapping or fishing mm -hmm. And then migrate them over. I think the hardest part is where, like, when we grew up, we didn't have a choice how to hunt. Like, you had to scout. You had to walk out there. You had right. to look for scrapes. You had to look yep. for rubs. You had to sit in trees. You wouldn't see deer. And you had to sit in trees. And you wouldn't see deer. And you had to sit in trees. And then you would see deer. Right. Like, nowadays, because of the technology of cell cameras and everything else, like, they don't really have to hunt. If they don't want to see, like it, it's, mm -hmm. and I'm, and I'm not just blaming on a hunting. I think it's just how everything else in life is. Is like think about, you know, yeah, I had a Game Boy or whatever growing up, but like I didn't. It wasn't like I was out playing my Game Boy when I was in a tree stand. Like these kids are playing Nintendo Switches and like connected all the time. Like it's right. just, mm -hmm. it's a different lifestyle of how do you get them to really love the outdoors all right. without yeah. pushing them into it to where they hate it. You know, it's yeah. that fine balance of. I want them to have success, but not so much success to where they think it's too easy because yeah. that won't hook them. Like the reason we all have this passion still is because like we struggled when we started at this thing. It mm -hmm. wasn't like, oh, we just went out and killed bucks. And like it was yeah. that's how we did it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I worry about that. Like I, I don't fortunately just with a chain of events like my kids have killed one and two year old bucks. But if you look at some of these kids online, they're killing booners. Giants. like consistently booners yep, yep. and it's like where's that kid go from here you know i'm yeah. still chasing the booner but he's just killed two back to back like <clears throat> does he really like hunting 
Mm-hmm. Does he really feel like this is it? Like he's he's connected? Maybe he does. I'm not saying that he doesn't, but it just seems really odd if like at nine and ten years old you killed 170 inch deer. Like where yeah. do you go from there? Yeah. Well, and that's like here for a while when you you know were into deer hunting pretty good. You started doing videos. Yep. And you would bring stuff home and you would sit on the computer. We bought you some kind of software to do, you know, change you know, different things it's and add music. <laughs> and yeah, when you have Metallica Sandman on there. <laughs> no, it was, it was Ted's. I had Ted's. I had Fred Bear playing uh, and okay. I had. Um, we do like Metallica. Hold. Come on. We do like Metallica. I, we do. Love, we love Metallica, but I'm just saying it was Ted's stuff. But uh, so that kind of brought the technology, the computer stuff into the thing. So they go out. I mean, that's all they did. Him and Ange and who else was all with you? Rieger. 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 Yep. Shrek. Yeah. And you had to videotape Shrek. all the hunts. <laughs> <laughs> and then you would sit and you would try it on the computer and make it a different hunt. I mean, it was, it was interesting. So it it made you get out and hunt so you could come home and do this on the computer. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it was neat. I think it's a weird thing because, like, I... um. As much as, uh, to be honest, this week has been as much, quote, woodsmanship as I've done in a long time, oh. transparently, yeah. because we haven't had cameras out, because we can't use, I mean, hell, we even caught ourselves. We're like, oh, let's, we only have two cell cameras. Like, we have to place, oh, it's like, wait a minute, we can't, you can't put we called the, the game warden, yeah. and it's right. federal right. land, and he's like, yeah, you can't do that. Nope. So, I mean, it's. It's literally woodsmanship. To your point, you're like, man, if there's no pressure here, I am in the spot. But the thing you can't monitor because my, you don't my woodman's woodsmanship has been on point. You don't <laughs> there you can't you can't observe what's happening when you're not there. Right. Yeah. Right. So there's a huge well, and I have run into <laughs> well, for instance, the one spot I went to, I was like, well, I walked to the very, you know, the back end of this ag field and I'm getting ready to cross this spot in here, and there's a there's a guy in there squirrel hunting. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> he's like calls me over and he's like, he's like a Chinaman from uh uh Wichita. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh we're, we're squirrel yeah. hunting. Yeah. He's a Chinese man. He's not a Chinaman. Chinese he's a man from, yeah. yeah, well he's from Wichita. Asian American <laughs> is what he prefers. Okay. Well, I thought he was from Eureka, that Chinese place. <laughs> no, that place no, closed. That's family business. <laughs> okay. And uh um, but, but anyways, he's like, yeah, there's five of us here uh, squirrel hunting. And I was like, oh, okay. He's like, yeah, you're good. Go ahead. Teriyaki chicken. And uh, <laughs> you get that for me for you know, a Chinaman. <laughs> <laughs> you see where I get that from. And uh, okay. so I, yeah, so I, right I cross the river there and I find this like awesome spot. I'm like classic like rut funnel here. You know, I'm looking at I'm like, okay, like, you know, the you know, running into that guy was not the best sign, but right, you know, right. we'll see. And I'm walking out and I run into another one. He's like, Oh, we well, squirrel hunting, you know. Right. I'm like, Okay, that spot's out. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But but case in point, it's like had I not run into those guys, I might have been all in on mm-hmm. that spot. I might have been like, This right. is it. And lo, lo and behold, there's guys walking right through there, just waltzing around, oh. shooting squirrels. Um, okay, a couple more before we wrap this up here soon. <laughs> Just go with teriyaki, yeah. Um, so one of the questions was like b- before even the season starts, we all probably have in our mind what's what's the thing we look forward to the most in the upcoming season? Oh, one thing that's hard. I know. Just all of it, just yeah. the whole, just being here, just the process, right. just the, the it, whole experience, shutting the world out to just mm-hmm. be a part of deer season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, just being here in Kansas, knowing no matter where you're at, at any moment, that buck of a lifetime can walk through like it did today. And to me, that's the whole thing there. You know, it may get boring. I don't see anything of that, but. I know they're there. I know there's big deer here, and it's just at any moment one could walk through, and that's what I'm waiting for. I look forward to the lack of distractions because you're in your stand. Mm-hmm. You have lots of time, and we don't, as men and or any hunter and women, we don't take time just to be quiet and appreciate being in the creator's beautiful creation, and. Uh, 
I anticipate just the lack of uh, distractions in life and, and take time uh, up there and appreciate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I mean, I look at this as like the blessing and curse of all, all oh, mankind, yeah. right? Like the fact that like we could sit here and work and do whatever from a tree stand at the same time. It's like, you know, I remember growing up and there was, there was nothing like you had, I remember you talking about like flicking your release. Mm. And that's like all I remember doing in a tree stand when I was younger is like sitting there flicking my release and like binos up, like just scanning, flick release, binos up. Cause there was no, Oh, let me just see what's going on on Facebook yeah, today or no, YouTube yeah, or whatever. No. It didn't exist. Right. You know, when that, that side Instagram of didn't exist yet. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's a, it's a kind of a crazy side of it. Um, like some Facebook, but I don't remember like those, our first phones, like it wasn't going on the internet. I don't think. No. no. Like our, my envy text messaging, stuff, maybe like, like maybe I got a text message. Yeah. Oh, um, it's a weird thing when you look at it because, you know, when you talk about like what obviously like the goal, at least for me, is like I want to kill a mature deer like that when I work, when I enter a season and then I don't really care what state it is like the goal is to kill a mature deer. But I think the more that we get into it, it's the you know, we talk about that deer camp there. We don't have that anymore. No. which was so cool like the moment no. we left deer camp on whatever tuesday night after thanksgiving we started looking forward to next year's deer camp yeah and it, it's a tough thing to to put a finger on but like it that doesn't exist for most people anymore no no and that's how it used to be we used to leave well it used to be saturdays and then next thing that was friday day after thanksgiving you know we'd be up friday morning five yeah. o'clock load up the truck you know, all the food, all the stuff and everything, and head to camp, you know. And most, a lot of times we came home Monday night, but a lot of times we stayed till Tuesday, came home on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And, but just being in the camp, camp atmosphere, Saturday we'd do some grouse hunting, pheasant hunting and stuff. You know, Sunday was going out target practice and stuff. <clears throat> and then hear the whole, all the old, deer stories you know yeah. for the upteenth time you know sure. <laughs> but it's just you know it's just what they were then we always used to have the prediction there could be 12 guys in camp and we'd go around well, what's your prediction how many deer i don't think we ever took more than one deer in camp <laughs> yeah it was a, well we talked about that here the most deer that we ever killed out of our group was two yeah the year that you and i killed and steve did not right that was the that was the best year that we had at this camp. Right. Other than that, I don't think we ever killed two deer from no. this camp. I, I've really enjoyed um, th this year, especially like I think this podcast has just opened a lot of doors for us in terms of like, uh, not not invitations necessarily, but it's it's fun to just like when people ask you to be or they invite you oh, to yeah. Yeah. come out or be a part, and it's sure. it, it's fun to roll out and be you know. It's funny because like we do, we're just we're just dudes, you know, that just mm -hmm. do this podcast. It's like you guys have been a part of this all it is. Yeah, and so it's yeah, fun. You know how many guys envy your job, what you do? Yeah. I mean, how yeah. much you've hunted yeah. this year? Yeah, no doubt. So it's like well, they want to hear the stories. They want to know where you're at next, what you're doing next. Yeah, and that's and that's know. fun. It's fun yeah. to be able to share that with people. And so oh, like, yeah. that's why I'm yeah. stoked to go into these camps. Like so to go in and and uh, you know stay with some of these people we've never stayed with and stuff before. It's fun because they're like we're highly anticipated yeah. guests and it's like, Hey, I'm just, I'm, I'm here to help. Like I want to yeah. help other people get on deer, you know, right. help, you know, these deer get processed uh -huh. and stuff. And it's, so that's, that's been fun for right. me this year. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. We do enjoy eating deer too. Oh yeah. yeah. So oh. dough fest, dough fest is on. Dough fest we is ate on. a bunch of hot, hot and mild sausage, Italian oh, sausage yeah. here Delicious. at deer camp. Yeah. That wrecked our stomachs the next day. Though. Oh, yeah. I sat in that first day and I hung for about 10 minutes. <laughs> we were all destroyed oh. straight after that. <laughs> you would think with all the other things. No, no, no. It was that that did, did the thing in. But it was even better on the spaghetti the next day. The spaghetti was a nice bind for yeah. me. Yeah. a nice web. <laughs> um, all right. Let me let me end this on this because we got to get up early. Is I'm going to challenge the dads to one just one one story about jared and one story about me that you all from a hunting standpoint just distinctively it doesn't have to be anything special but just one that you're like immediately you're like i remember this experience you want to start Dwayne? i'll start so jared's first deer that i remember him shooting with a gun i remember is at the robinsons and you had a 30 30 i think open sights 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, Scope. A Scope? Yep. Okay. It was your Marlin 3030. Marlin 3030. Yep. It's got a choice. And he made a good shot on, on a nice doe. Love her action. And of just course- jumped out of the truck. And I mean, we were pulling into our hunting spot and like we parked and we got out and we're like, there's a doe. And then we shot her. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't like but, road hunting. It was but, like she but, was just right there. Yeah. But very memorable as a dad for your son to get his first deer. Yeah. And I remember uh, lots of snow, lots of snow, easy track. Yeah. We found it right away. But what was memorable about the story uh, it was not just his first deer, but I made him got the deer himself, mm-hmm. and I walked him through, you know, where where to put your knife, and and it got to the point, and I just remember this scene from Red Dawn. <laughs> where they take the heart out and they cut the tip off and the guy eats it and you get the spirit of the deer in you. And so as Jared's gotten the deer and here comes the little Kurt Russell in you at that point, or comes, no Swayze, I guess. Right here, here, here comes the heart. And, and I told Jared, I said, you know, you got to cut the tip off and eat it. And he looked at me and he says, are you sure? I'm like, Jared, it's your first deer. You got to eat the tip of the heart. And so he took a, it's all bloody and slimy and it's obviously not pumping. CWD filled. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But uh, Jared ate it. Wiped it off the snow, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then I felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> I hear so he's like, what an idiot. No, no, no. You really did that? I can't believe you actually no, no, did that. No, that he, That's literally what he said. I can't believe you actually did that. No, no. Then, then he's like, did your dad make you do that? And I said, no, I saw it in a movie. <laughs> You know, Red Dawn. And so I did it. I took a part of the heart and I cut a tip off and I ate it as well. Mm-hmm. So that was our bonding experience. Uh, Story. That was the first deer yeah. I ever killed. Yeah. Well, and I think the same for me would be the first deal he killed in archery when I was on the Alps and yeah. in the field. I mean, I watched the binoculars. And like I said, I see the one there just laid down and the other one standing there looking at it like, what are you doing? Get up, you know. And then finally he moved and that deer ran. But, uh, I couldn't wait. I mean, I wanted to jump out of that tree stand and run across that field. It was it was better than any deer I ever shot. I just, you know, and I mean, you get to see that now with the boys. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it's exciting when that happens now. And so, just like you said, both of us is your, Jared's first deer kill. And I'm sure you feel the same way with Harlan and Carter. Yeah. Their first. Yeah. I, you know, even though they were four years old when they got their first one. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> But yeah, that's for because just, you know. Did you make him eat the heart? No, no. I didn't. <sighs> nah. No. I actually, the first year I killed, it was a button buck and I shot it between the eyes with a 12 gauge oh. slug. Oh, boy. You want to tell that story? Yeah, real quick. <laughs> let me tell this story. So, my brother in law, where he lived, there was a field and then there was woods behind his house. Well, we knew there was a lot of deer in those woods. So I take him and my two nephews and we go in the back and there's like a, it's almost like a shelf type thing. So I space them like 50 yards apart. I said, now your dad and my father-in-law and all that, you're going to be putting the drive on. I said, so when we see the deer, I said, you know, pick a deer. Well, we're standing there. Next what is it? Enough. It's it's doe season only. This is back when PA three day doe season. Okay. First yeah. day of three day doe yeah, season. Right. So they're back and put next, you know, here come the deer. I mean, I couldn't tell you how many deer were there. And these guys just start unloading. <laughs> and I'm just, my oh, one nephew, he's got a 30-30, and he jammed after about three shots, and he's trying to get it fixed. My other nephew's facing the other way, shooting at a deer, but he keeps hitting the tree instead of the deer. And he must, I think he just kept shoving shell and shooting after a shotgun. I think he went through like 10 shells. <laughs> I'm like, so they finally stopped and he's getting, and I come over and his deer's laying on his back with a hole right between his eyes going, twitching. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's dead. Just stop. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, oh my God, we got dead deer all over the place. That was the only deer we had dead. <laughs> oh, no. Meanwhile, they... Well, like I said, they were shooting 30 30. So I think they we went shot 21. I counted 21 shots. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> they killed one deer. And one deer. Right between the eyes. <laughs> uh, you can always tell 
you know, when you hear a bunch of shots, you're like, oh, they missed. Yeah. yeah. Right. And it was at the end. I remember yeah. vividly, like, just, yeah, like he said, I was, I had a 12 gauge of slice. So it's oh, three shots, man. reload, three shots. And this <laughs> one button buck just comes up, like, you know, lagging by. I don't know where I'm at. It just yeah. stopped in front of me and just shot it right now. <laughs> I mean, they, they come, and they're coming over the hill. And Are you me. aiming for his head? No, oh, I was man. aiming for his chest. <laughs> <laughs> they were just pointing and shooting. Oh, I'm, I'm uh, telling you, yeah, I caught a 21 shot. So I'm thinking, oh my God, I got dead deer all over this hillside. And I said, you guys, stop right. You stay right there. And I started looking. It was the only dead one I found. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. Absolutely uh, crazy. That was the first deer I ever killed. <laughs> wow. Oh, Pretty dramatic yeah. fashion. Yeah. So, so I mm-hmm. took it and had cut everything, you know, the skull, cut the little nubs off. And they were and, all shattered because I broke yeah, the skull. Put him on a piece of board and put his. That was his first buck, and so we got the hang on. <laughs> yeah, you got the, uh, the little nubs. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, you know, you can sit and tell stories. Yeah. All night long, you know, and that was the thing about the deer camp. That's you'd hear the stories just over and over and over, yeah. and it was great. Yeah. Right. But then, you know, everybody just lives change and kids grow up and move in different directions, move out of state or whatever. And it all kind of just goes away. Well, I mean, this was Kansas was kind of our first try to reinvigoration of a deer camp. You yeah. know, we, we really I know you guys did your, you know, with Willie and Dale and Brian with Ohio and stuff. But like for us, I mean, our first chance at like having a deer camp again was like, hey, let's go to Kansas and let's do this. And like this, this has been like the first kind of reinvigoration of deer camp and, you know, it's a start, you know, and that's, that's what you got to kind of put out there and do. And, um, you know, it it is funny because you think about that camaraderie around it. And, and and I think archery is a tough thing, you know, gun season and the way that that we're kind of rolled opening day gun season. But when you talk about archery and like the patience and the the kind of consistency and frequency that you're out hunting, like it's tough to have a camp around like archery hunting mm. unless you do like these these trips. So well, I think it's just more slow paced archery, you know, where yep. rifle you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna go out and sit here and I'm gonna see three hundred deer today and I'm gonna shoot them. But with archery, it's a totally different ball game. You're going in, you're trying to get in quiet as can be sit you know hopefully you know where there's a big buck or whatever so it's, it's like it's a more individual yeah yeah sport. you know with the gun it's a lot of driving yeah. and stuff it's more it's not like, like, okay, it's well, like a team hunt yeah we're gonna set you down here we're gonna go put a drive on for you, <laughs> you yeah know? i think it's also that you're not going to be shooting a lot right, right. oh exactly. you may never right. release an arrow right exactly yeah i mean you might not even see a deer this is this yeah. this could be and i'm not going to jinx us we have tomorrow and and thursday morning this could be the first year that I don't think we will have released an arrow. Yeah. yeah. Might as well just sling one. Sling one, yeah. yeah. You know? So, um, well, listen, we appreciate everybody listening to the live at Kansas Deer Camp podcast. We've been, you know, kind of throwing this out there on a whim, but um, we're excited to have the dads in camp for this. And and Jared and I obviously had a blast with the live episode on Halloween. And, you know, we... Um, you know, as long as you guys keep enjoying these, we'll keep doing them. And, um, you know, for us, it's way past our Kansas deer camp bedtime. Oh yeah. Uh, we <laughs> got to get up bright and early to get into our stands and stuff. Uh, but yeah, we appreciate everybody out there and, and good luck during the rut. And we'll, we'll catch you next week. Yep. Later.